welcome to a meeting of the North Penn School District Board of School Directors, August 21st, 1997. The meeting, the meeting tonight is on our regularly scheduled action meeting. This meeting is being videotaped for community cable channels. Individuals attending this meeting and intending to speak to the board should be aware that they are being videotaped. In order to meet the requirements of Pennsylvania Sunshine Law, it is necessary to record the names of all citizens who speak to the board during the meeting. To assure compliance with this requirement, it is essential that those planning to address the board come to the microphone and state their name and address. Members of the audience are asked to limit their questions and comments to no more than five minutes. This limit will permit time for all those who wish to speak to the board to do so. Whenever members of the audience exceed this time limit, the board president may ask the individual to yield the microphone to the next speaker, and this is in reference to board policy 8344.2. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, um, we're going to have a pledge of allegiance by our new member of the cabinet, Dr. Betty Robinson. Housekeeping to attend to. Where's Aaron? Aaron. Uh, as of the last meeting, we did in fact have an executive session on August 12, 1997, from 6:30 p.m. to 7:30 p.m. for matters of personnel. The report in today's uh, reporter is accurate, and uh, it is also accurate that it was an oversight on my part. We had an executive session. We came into a special action meeting, if you remember, and then went into a work session on technology. Very, very, very busy night, uh, and I missed it. It is that simple. I missed it. So on the public record, Mrs. Hatfield, would you note that I have complied more than a week late? We had an executive session this evening from 8.21.97 uh, from 6.30 this evening till 7.30 for matters of litigation. This evening, at the close of the meeting, which I hope will be, for your sake and ours, a short meeting, <coughs> we will have an executive session for matters of personnel again, and uh, I don't know when that will conclude. Okay, at this time, I would like to um, turn the meeting over to Superintendent Bose. He has a welcome he'd like to make and uh, some comments, too. I want to officially welcome Dr. Betty Robinson to uh, the board meetings. And I promise her that she'll have many exciting evenings next <laughs> Wednesday. <laughs> and uh, uh, generally, they'll be uh, uh, enlightening, interesting, and I hope productive as well. Welcome aboard. Thank you. And uh, thank you, uh, President uh, uh, Mangle. <laughs> <laughs> I had to think carefully about it. <laughs> uh, I do want to make an opening statement about the appointment of Fred Shipman. Obviously, it's been a matter of uh, high attention, and great interest, uh, some uh, speculation, and a great deal of inaccuracy. Uh, so bear with me as I refer to my notes and uh, try to walk us all through uh, a complete explanation, which I hope will give this gentleman a good send-off and a very critical job in his school district uh, and uh, provide him the kind of support uh, that the children he will serve certainly deserve. Judy Clark's departure was a loss for this school district. And many members of the public, as well as the board and the staff, have shared the same thoughts. It was a personal decision. Some of us know uh, the origin of it and respect the privacy and the confidentiality of her right to make a decision like that. Those who want to know should ask her. I think the speculation about it does not serve her or any of anybody else or this school district uh, well and in fact might be a disservice. So if you want to know why Judy Clark decided to leave, ask Judy Clark. There were three distinct efforts that I personally am aware of and have participated in and there are more, I believe, that were little sidebar conversations with Judy even after her resignation where she thoughtfully reconsidered rescinding. There were those discussions, so those who think there is no effort to dissuade her are inaccurate and they are wrong. 
There was a report of a salary freeze, a four-year salary freeze. Absolutely untrue. The school district's payroll records and personnel records demonstrate no such freeze occurred. And for those who would believe it and reflect negatively on its motivation, on Judy or those who made those decisions, uh, are doing again a disservice both to the truth and to the individuals involved. There was no such salary freeze in the adjustments she received for the last four years or whatever four-year period was in question. The replacement search. If you don't know, let me be the first to tell you that in this country there is a growing shortage of school administrators. The younger generation of teachers is not taking graduate courses working toward degrees in school administration that previous generations did. Those of you who follow journals that advertise these jobs on a nationwide basis will note a rise in the number of jobs, particularly principalships uh, and the central office jobs over the past five years that is a signal and a harbinger of, of a, a decrease significantly in the supply of such personnel, which already is known by educational demographic forecasters, has been reported, hasn't hit the general media, and will probably become extremely critical at the turn of the century. How does this affect the search for a successor? Obviously, we looked for a successor who had two licenses, Director of Pupil Personnel Services and Special Education. <coughs> A close look at the most recent publication of the Pennsylvania School Boards Association, which in this field is, is the prominent uh, source of job opportunities through its weekly postings in a publication received by hundreds of people, thousands of people across the state. One only needs uh, to peruse the last one to see the inordinate amount of jobs in special education that are being advertised. In this county, right now, there is another school district searching for the same kind of personnel with the same kind of credentials. And in, and in Montgomery County and across the state of Pennsylvania, there are many people in this position who do not have both certifications because there's a shortage. Economically, it's a matter of supply and demand. What I'm forecasting for you is the specter of an increasing shortage. The selection of Fred Shipman. Why Fred Shipman? For over 25 years, I'll say it again, for over 25 years, Fred Shipman has held the same position. 15 years in Quakertown, five years in Easton, five years in Colonial. The same position with the same responsibilities that this position revised will provide obligations to fulfill upon assumption of duties. His certifications are Supervisor Psychological Services, a certification that Judy didn't have. Supervisor Pupil Personnel Services, same certification that Judy had, and, and obviously there's the absence of the supervisor of special ed. He is also and has extraordinary experience and a national reputation both as a consultant and an author uh, in the area of teenage crisis, suicide, and suicide prevention. I believe uh, that, that, that I hope that that's a service and an expertise we never need, but it, that's the kind of background that, that this gentleman has and is recognized by a host of other states and the Department of Education in this state as its primary consultant in those matters. <coughs> I sought legal advice because I knew we had a dilemma when I saw the number of applicants for the position, the number of qualified <coughs> people, and the lack of the right combination of licenses. I consulted with Sweet, Stevens, and Katz, a law firm that is engaged by the school district to give it counsel in labor and in special education. Mr. Bartle is our general counsel. Uh, he 
he's the jack of all trades, except for those three guys. <coughs> we turn to Sweets, Katz, and uh, Sweets, uh, Stevens, and Katz for that uh, uh, service. Three attorneys were ones in that office who served as my contact in a number of conversations over time about this matter. And they are Paul Stevens, Rosemary Mullally, and Andrew Faust. I want to quote a part of the letter that did not get in the newspaper, that was leaked to that newspaper addressed to me on this matter, which I shared with the Board of Education. This is a part of the letter that never got in the newspaper. Quote, we discussed the following option that we had previously shared with you. We discussed this again. They had shared with, it, with me previously. I am emphasizing now. Specifically, the applicant's title would be Director of Pupil Personnel. We chose Director of Student Services. Obviously, uh, we, we can argue about whether or not they're synonyms or not. Uh, the, that title is commonly used elsewhere. I think it's one and the same. The duties are one and the same. But a job function of this position would be coordination with the supervisor of special education and supervisor of curriculum and instruction. This would permit the individual to fulfill the district's need to assure compliance with its obligation for the provision of special education services without violating certification requirements. Ms. Schuster, Pennsylvania Department of Education, suggested the title for this position should not, however, include coordinator of special education. Instead, she suggested that coordination with the supervisor of special education and the supervisor of curriculum instruction be included as a job function in the job description for this position. Uh, hence, the uh, contact uh, with uh, a legal advisor and uh, the uh, decision that based upon that advice and the prior experience and the combination of certifications that within a shortage uh, of supply in this field, we would engage the services of Fred Shipman. It is, after all, close to the beginning of the new school year, and there are important parts of this school district's operation that are assumed by that department, and to have a director in place before school starts or shortly thereafter is critical to uh, North Penn. Last but not least, let me share a quote now from the reporter. What I found fascinating about the reporter's coverage was the dichotomy in the two articles written by one reporter compared to the follow-up written by another reporter. I will quote, August 19th reporter, Byline Peter Loftus, quote, Pennsylvania Department of Education spokesman Michelle Haskins, get this, a different spokesman from the Pennsylvania Department of Education, said Shipman's hiring would not trigger a PDE audit. Instead, the hiring would be among the items addressed in a routine state audit. Haskins said, Haskins and PDE probably would not have a problem with Shipman's hiring as long as he did not directly oversee special education. No, we do not have a concern as long as these students are receiving the proper special education, Haskins said, end of quote. That's from the reporter. I'll end my comments now by suggesting that we've made a very critical decision and, and uh, we've employed a person with great capabilities and significant potential who has demonstrated over 25 years the ability to do the job in three other distinctly different school districts in our Commonwealth and will do no less as he joins the North Penn staff. Thank you, Madam President. Okay, thank you, Dr. Bose. Ladies and gentlemen, it's very important to us in two areas that, first of all, we restore the confidence uh, to parents that have special education children beginning with board members around the table with special education children, and I, and I look over at Mr. Weitz, and, and I myself have special ed children. The last thing we need is to feel that our weaker children will not get the type of help and the expertise that they need and desire. We don't feel that way from time to time for our more stronger and more fortunate children, but when these children 
seem to be in some form of jeopardy, it's imperative that we get out in front of the curve as best as, as, best as we can, uh, even when we don't know that it's coming, to try and correct that. Secondly, it's important that we attempt to make Mr. Shipman whole again. This man has a distinguished career for 25 years. He's hired at North Penn, and he probably has received more publicity about himself personally and his career like he has never seen in his life. We are now on day four of speculation and worry and concern and bafflement over a man that has done this all his life. I have to, I have never met him. I have to wonder what he must be thinking about our community. Is this North Penn? Is this Beirut? Downtown Beirut. This is no way for a school district or a local paper to welcome anybody into our community. He's not stepped foot here. He has not cost us a dime yet. I ask you, I ask the media to please join me in making Mr. Shipman whole and see if we can turn this around and provide him a proper welcome, one which he deserves. Dr. Bose, I thank you for some of the uh, more specifics you provided us tonight. I also need to mention that the correction for uh, Mrs. Clark, Dr. Clark of Wissahickon now needed to be done. I spoke with Mrs. Clark today. She appreciated a correction being made on her behalf. She has <coughs> not now nor ever in her career been frozen for four years. And she said some of the most flattery she has ever received in her career was when she gave notice of her wish to change her career path to something she felt would be more challenging. Wissahickon is a smaller department. There's some new avenues that they're taking, and she would have an opportunity to do some ground-up work and wish to try it. She is familiar with many of the staff members there personally and professionally. She thought it would be a challenge and even fun to work with some of those known friends again. And she was, she was overwhelmed by the number of people that sought her out professionally and personally to see what could be done what they could do to get her to stay. I personally, on two occasions, went to Mrs. Clark and asked her, what would it take to change your mind? Tell me what it would be. Let me take it to the board. Let me see if there's majority interest on two occasions. <coughs> Dr. Bose professionally handled that in a different way. And I am, was told, without having to mention names to embarrass anybody, her colleagues did the same thing. So uh, enough said, she was never frozen for four years, and much <coughs> wooing was attempted to change her mind. Committee reports, facilities, buildings, and grounds, Mr. Schoen. Yes. We have minutes. Oh, minutes. minutes. So we have minutes. minutes. I jumped you down here before the minutes. I pulled it by those. Great. Number one, recommend approval of the minutes of the 745th meeting held on 7-17-97 as circulated mail. So moved. Second. Second. Motion by White, second by Clemens. Any questions? All in favor would say aye. 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 Opposed would say nay. Thank you. Recommend approval of the minutes of the 746th meeting held on 8-12-97 as circulated. So moved. Second. Thank you, Mr. White's on the motion. Mr. Schilling on the second. Board questions. All in favor would say aye. Aye. Opposed would say nay. Thank you. Mr. Schilling. Facilities, yes. buildings, and grounds. Okay. Um, facilities, re facilities report. Three module classrooms are in place at North Wells Elementary and finishing work is underway. Two classrooms have been set at Montgomery Elementary and corridor construction will begin tomorrow. Also, the general contractor was issued per permits and granted permission to proceed at Inglewood and General Nash on August 18th. <coughs> Layout and actual excavation was to begin yesterday, but was delayed due to the weather conditions. Our building principals, in cooperation with Dr. Hassler, have established a contingency plan for the September 3rd opening. We will utilize this plan until occupancy permits are granted at each location. Also on Monday, August 18th, we received approval of a modified land development plan for the NAP project from the Planning Commission. 
This approval is contingent upon approval by the borough engineers. These plans are currently under review, and once approved, they will be forwarded to borough council for final approval. All our, of our schools have been thoroughly cleaned and ready for the opening of the 1997-1998 term. Many projects and upgrades have been completed by our staff and have been very well received by our principals and teachers upon their early return. End of report. Thank you. Sir. <coughs> Any questions around? Uh, yes, Ms. Tango. Mm -hmm. um, either John or Art um, visited Montgomery today. Apparently, the, those modulars will not be completed in the uh, time for the start of school. They've instituted their contingency plan to put those two classes uh, in other much smaller rooms. Could you please uh, report to the board your estimated completion date, please? Our, est <coughs> our estimated completion date. Uh, as of this afternoon, and barring any weather mishaps between now and the 3rd of September, is that we will seek occupancy on Tuesday, the 2nd of September, from both Labor and Industry and Montgomery Township. Okay. Um, when will the uh, classes actually take occupancy? We hope to do that on September 3rd. But you are right, Mr. Wilson, at the direction of Dr. Hassler, has developed the contingency plan, and I believe, Bob, you can help me, it's an art and music room? It's a, a music room, and it's a, another room. There's a possibility of the art room, but also another um, room that's uh, available. Any further questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Schilling. Mr. Hill, Community Services and Policy. Yes, uh, this evening we have the uh, <coughs> meeting of three policies. As you will recall, the adoption of three resolutions during the uh, June 97 uh, pertaining to capital reserve fund, the budgetary reserve, and long-term borrowing. Uh, these resolutions were originally given uh, uh, to the board and they were passed in that period of time. Uh, this evening we obtained, as directed by the board to uh, proceed with making it in the policies. We have those three written this evening. Uh, everyone in the audience has copies of those in their packet. If anyone in the TV audience is interested in a copy of those uh, policies, they can be obtained from uh, Ken Weir's office. And, uh, and this concludes the reading of those first three policies. I'd like to uh, point, point out here that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, these policies fulfill a promise made by this board that it will get a grip on the finances of this school district, and they were a combination of committee promises and campaign promises. I'd like to specifically thank Mrs. Uh, Schur and Mr. Mosey for their work in finance, along with Tom Tracy on this move, and also Art Wood and uh, Dr. Bose for seeing to it that those here uh, on a day-to-day -day basis fulfill the wish of the board in handling these policies. Uh, are there any board questions to uh, the left? Yes. Um, when I saw this in my packet, Ms. Mango, I uh, had the green sheets from the June meeting when these were originally presented, and it was, I have a note here, it was to be tabled until the June 26th meeting. I noticed tonight that we are going to vote on the capital reserve policy, budgetary reserve policy, and long-term borrowing policy. Am I correct? Those three policies. Those three I don't believe we're voting on the policies. Not voting. The first reading. Oh, the first reading. Uh, we also that night um, had a fund balance policy which came before the board, and I don't see that uh, being included tonight. Is there any reason why? I'm not familiar. Vicki? Pat, I believe that was, uh, there was a need for further discussion and consideration by the board. Um, and also giving some thought how far we may want to uh, completely contain ourselves in the areas of finance. I think this is something that perhaps we should allow our new manager of financial affairs to also be very much a part of and given consideration because we are already um, making a long-term commitment in terms of dollars and financial activity in the area of the budget reserve account at 1.5 and also your capital reserve projects account. Um, so. At this point in time, it has not been developed yet, and once we have a pulse of the board as to whether or not we want to follow through with that, then we'll, 
or look towards putting one together or removing it from the table altogether. So as of tonight, that particular policy is still pending? No, because at that time there were some concerns whether or not we wanted to do the resolution even at that moment and whether or not we want to make a commitment to that in policy. That is a, a so completely yes, arbitrary action so on the yes, part of the board. So yes, it's pending. Right. Okay. Because uh, I was just wondering. Um, also, during the budgetary process, there was much discussion about the possibility of the need for additional aids, teachers' aids, when the school year starts. And, of course, Dr. Bose had said at that time, and I agreed with them that let's wait and see what the numbers are and see where we need and how many we need. If we have to hire more aides, what fund will that money come out of or what, what account? Will that come out of the fund balance or will it come out of the budget reserve? Budget reserves. Okay, because I have a note on the budget reserve that the transfer from the budgetary reserve to the functional limit may only be made during the last nine months of the fiscal year. If we do this in September, that'll be 10 months. Actually, what we can do, Mr. Mosey, is we can pay out of the payroll account and then make the transfer and stay within the last nine months. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you, sir. Anybody else to the left? The right? I just explain that portion of the policy path. That is according to school code regulations. Okay. They require that it does not occur outside the last nine months of the fiscal year. Okay. Mr. Hill, thank you. Yes. K through 12 curriculum, Mrs. Creeper. During the week of August the 18th, 65 new teachers took part in the induction training. David Page, staff developer and the curriculum supervisors, provided the training sessions. In addition, each new teacher met their mentor teacher and visited their building for an orientation. Training sessions included multicultural training and introdu introduction to state codes and the professional ethics and awareness requirements setting and meeting of professional goals, classroom management and discipline, and lesson planning. On Thursday and Friday, each new teacher had an in-depth orientation and introduction to the various curricular areas that they are scheduled to teach. The five-day program provided an excellent introduction to the North Penn School District and extensive background in each of the instructional areas. With the beginning of school, each of the buildings are preparing for the opening of school. Supplies and textbooks are being prepared. Enrollments will be monitored throughout the first two weeks, followed by a recommendation for the addition of instructional aids if they are necessary. Administrators are meeting with Dr. Hassler and Dr. Robinson to ensure the smooth opening of school. We anticipate an excellent beginning on Thursday, September 4th. Thank you. Any questions of Mrs. Breeder? Okay, Mrs. Krieger, continue if you will. Uh, the only thing I want to point out to the board is on tonight's agenda, and you'll see um, we should have received a, um, a green sheet uh, for item 3E, um, which are recommending the approval for the contract at Lakeside Alternative School. We purchase of 40 slots for the alternative education students in the amount of $554,400 for the 97-98 school year. Okay, any further questions of Mrs. Craver? I, um, I personally have some questions to follow up uh, on Dr. Bose's and, and your comments if, it, if I may do so. Um, Dr. Bose, um, going back to your comments about the uh, process that was used for the recommendation of the special ed can uh, director candidate. Um, it's my understanding, Dr. Bose, that you received a fax from Sweet Stevens, Tucker, and Katz, the one you alluded to and that you read from tonight, on July the 17th at 503 p.m. Is that correct, sir? I don't remember the time, but I think the date's correct. Okay. Is it also correct, Dr. Bose, that the board had an executive session that night where the particular situation surrounding our, our abilities to find qualified candidates to apply for this job was discussed at length by the board. If I'm, just, if I'm recollecting the July 17th meeting correctly, I believe that we did meet and specifically discuss 
uh, the difficulties that you expressed that you were having? Yes. Okay. Um, it was also my understanding that you were asked what you anticipated in doing should you not find a qualified candidate. And I think you alluded to the possibility if that were to happen uh, that you would have to decide um, how to structure that department um, in the event that that would occur, that you would seek legal advice. Is that correct? I don't know which tense of verb I used. I believe I used the past tense, not the present tense. Okay. But yet, later on that evening, this board sat and approved a reorganization which listed uh, within that structure the position of Director of Special Education and Student Services at a salary of $85,000. Um, could you just explain for me, please, Dr. Bose, why receipt of that fax was not mentioned to the board that night in executive session? I'm not sure I'd read it and studied it myself. That's since uh, you indicate the time, the time probably was uh, between the, my departing for the day and uh, my uh, coming back for the board meeting that evening. It may, have, may be that I didn't see it until the next morning. All the secretaries were gone, and you said it was 5.02. I don't remember what time it is. Uh, well, my, my point is, Dr. Bose, that you had had to, at some point prior to that, requested and had, according to the details listed in the letter, some previously, previous conversations about this particular applicant even though he was not mentioned to the board by name that evening. Is that correct? Say that again. Uh, my concern stems from the July 17th meeting, Dr. Bose. And I am, conti I continue to be very confused that it's very obvious by the receipt, the date, the time of this letter and its contents that you had sought out previous um, legal advice on a particular prospective applicant. I don't see how you can say that. Well, it says right here, we are writing in response to your inquiry regarding the certification <coughs> of prospective replacement applicant for the position to be vacated by Judy Clark. And it goes on. Then you read the part tonight where it says, we discussed the following options that we had previously shared with you. And that is specifically what the applicant's title would need to be. And my point is, and where my confusion comes from, is that if this was requested prior to July 17th, we had an executive session, the situation was discussed, no mention of this particular candidate uh, or his concern of not having the proper certification was mentioned to the board at that session. Then we proceeded out to the board meeting and were asked as an elected body to approve a reorganization of your administrative structure which kept the position the <coughs> same. Not to mention that the advertisements in the ILS booklet received, the date is June the 30th, I believe, May the 30th, um, is a specific advertisement to the requirements and the certifications that the applicant must hold in order to apply. So, you know, I am, I am still at a loss to explain as to how the particular applicant not having the proper certification that was advertised for could have possibly, knowing this district's past history for turning away applicants who are certified, and I am still confused as to how this individual made even the final cut and how an internal candidate was completely overlooked when she had the proper certification. Um, as was noted in the articles, I was out of town on vacation when I came home and saw the replay of the board meeting. 
in the privacy of my home, I was concerned, and to this date, Dr. Bose, I have not been afforded the information that I've requested in relationship to this applicant, that being his detailed resume and some of the other um, uh, things that would normally accompany um, your recommendations for people for us to hire, uh, i.e. the applicant that's on the agenda tonight, the manager of finance. I will not apologize for questioning the process that was used. Um, I don't think it was right. It leaves a very negative impression, not only in my mind, but grave concerns in my mind for how the department is going to be structured. And I suppose it would be appropriate to request at this time some indication from you, Dr. Bose, when you plan to provide the board with your new reorganization structure, the new job duties for the person that you've recommended and the district is hired, um, so that we can deal with this openly and publicly to clear up a lot of the confusion that stems simply and solely from the hiring process that was used. Mrs. Krieger, the information was received by all the board members about the recommendation with my note that this was a shortage area and there was difficulty in finding qualified candidates. I provided you the uh, document uh, pro, uh, that uh, was uh, the reference to uh, your reference to the facts, which was the advisory from the attorneys whose counsel I sought. I provided a draft of the job description. Uh, I never received a call from you before you left uh, and didn't attend the meeting where the appointment was made. Uh, I don't know what you mean about you question the process. The process is not anything different than what we traditionally use. There were very few applicants for this job. I told the board that uh, when the opportunity presented itself. There were very few applicants for the job. Uh, there were very few that had both the, the licenses that we sought. You're right, we posted uh, in the uh, ads uh, where we sought applicants the requirements and special ed certainly was mentioned. Uh, when we saw the response to the ads uh, being dismally small, <coughs> the number of people who had no certification or the lack of both certifi certifications, I began to become increasingly alarmed. And so it seemed prudent to me to consult, consult with counsel expert in this area, both in special education and in the certification requirements of the state, uh, to determine if we had any other options. I did that. Also, uh, Mrs. Krieger and members of the board, I hope you'll recall I sent a memo to each and every one of you prior to the meeting of the 12th where quite a number of people were hired. Everybody is, well, not everybody, but there's focus now on Mr. Shipman. But on that same evening, we uh, welcomed the board and, and accepted Dr. Betty Robinson, uh, uh, Marie Walsh, uh, quite a number of changes uh, in-house and, and new hirings. So I. Uh, there was a list and a memo that I sent to all of you that if there was any questions on anybody, please get back to me. And, and you all had that before any of you went on vacation. Also, I, I have to note that uh, we hold in very high regard uh, attorney Paul Stevens as a special ed expert. He has worked with Mr. Shipman in every single school district he's been in. He knows him personally and professionally from his years of being the solicitor for those districts, if that gives any level of comfort to any of you or, and also to the parents. Well, Mrs. Mingle, I am still not in receipt of any information on the applicant that was hired. It was not included in my packets that were delivered to my home Friday the 15th of August. Well, then I, I, I will call, ask that it's sent again. Uh, I called to Mr. Weir's office. And I left a request for that information first thing Monday morning, and I, I never heard another thing. Did you pick up the envelope at the counter? Excuse me? Did you pick up the envelope at the counter that was left for you? Did I pick up the envelope that was left at the counter? No, I wouldn't know that I was supposed to pick up those There was a message envelope. on your machine to pick up an envelope at the counter. I was not aware whether you picked it up or not. 
Well, I, I got a board packet delivery yesterday. No, I was no, looking no. forward no, to here. No, that was after your call. My secretary called your home, left a message <coughs> on your machine that there was a packet, an envelope to be picked up at the no. counter. I have not checked to see if it was picked up or not. It may still be there. I don't know. If you didn't pick it up. And it, I, has, it, and it has the applicant's detailed resume. It does not. Can, can, can the board be afforded a copy of that, please? Sure. Okay, with that answer, which is appropriate, the board members are entitled to that. Would either Solicitor Bartle or Dr. Miller please impress upon the board that total and complete resumes of employees include much personal information that they're entitled to keep private? They have some rights. Would one of you elaborate? I, I don't care which one. You're both attorneys, and we well, see both of you. It doesn't make any difference. The answer. The answer is as Judy gave it, uh, that, that information uh, uh, should be confidential. The district has not been uh, given authorization to, uh, to make public certain information, which is, uh, which is personal to the applicant. And I don't, uh, without reviewing the, uh, the resume, I wouldn't know what that information is, but, uh, but I would assume uh, that, uh, uh, that if, you, uh, if you need to make any particular portion of it uh, uh, public, that you would consult with either myself, Mr. Stevens, or uh, um, Dr. Miller before uh, before doing so. And Mrs. Mangle, I, 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 have, I have to emphasize, excuse me, Mr. White, <coughs> the importance of knowing that employees are employees, they have a public uh, service obligation, some information about them is, is public domain, and the public has the right to know. On the other hand, there's some information about them that is protected by federal law, and uh, uh, both uh, Mr. Bartle and Dr. Miller know what I'm talking about from their own legal training, uh, and the school district has an obligation to protect that as a confidence. Now, we've had a bad experience with the document being given out that was not intended to be generally circulated. My concern would be resumes in the hands of people who don't understand that might lead to a lawsuit that would cost this school district money to fame or harm somebody and uh, generally be unproductive uh, and harmful to all concerned. So I have said to you, you will get that material uh, at the next delivery we make to you, and, and I urge you to treat it as a confidential document. Uh, for whatever purposes you need to know, you will have that opportunity, but remember and respect the confidential nature of it and the uh, respect and obligation we have to employees when we circulate such documents. Okay, I for one want to be on the record, Dr. Miller. I do not want a copy of that resume. I've been here six years. We have how many employees in this district? 17, almost 17. <coughs> I have never needed a detailed resume of anybody here. That's what you people are paid very well to do, to screen and make sure that you provide our children with the best possible person available. Please do not send me a copy of that. I do not want it in my hands or in my home. I don't want one either. I just wanted to say before that I feel obligated to uh, say uh, in support of the administration that everything that was said here tonight in Dr. Bose's opening comments, all of the information, all of the recommendations, all of the uh, adjustments that were to be made to job descriptions were provided to me proactively in advance of my having to vote on Mr. Shipman's uh, appointment. And um, I continue to, to stand by my vote. And I believe that he is the most qualified applicant that we can appoint at this time. Mrs. Krieger, this was under your, you had the floor. Do you, do you have anything further what That's you said? That's all. Thank you. Any further questions of special ed student services? Thank you. Support services, Mr. Allen. No report. Thank you, sir. Report. Any questions of Mr. Allen? <coughs> Finance, Mr. Sheriff. Yes, thank you. I'm happy to present to the board uh, that under, in the areas of finance, one of the first items on the agenda is to present to the board for consideration the hiring of Carol S. Steady as our manager of finance. I'd like to say that um, my role in the interview process, uh, mine, <coughs> along with board members Pat Mosey and and Bill Allen, was was rather limited. Um, however, it was very insightful towards can in the candidates' abilities, qualifications, and personal attributes. 
uh, the process that we followed since there was a call here tonight, uh, I, I don't have it down in prepared, structured format. But essentially, the firm of Deloitte & Touche um, dealt with the front end of the process and receiving the applications and the initial screening process. Uh, they did bring to us five, five finalist candidates for interviews, uh, part of a committee in which was rather structured in that we had, there was established questions that would be asked of each of them and with some freelance time um, near the end of the meeting. Um, I don't want to in any way diminish the abilities and qualifications of those who were, who were not selected, but when you're looking for one position to be filled, there's, there's uh, one winner and many runner-ups and that's the way it has to be. I would say, though, that she was a clear leader in both her professional and personal attributes in that she has a very um, full and extensive background in the area of school finance. And I would urge the board to support the recommendation that she be hired at a salary of $75,000. On the other areas of finance that are here, and in conjunction with that, uh, Dr. Bose does also intend to ask that we uh, extend National Management Associates for, I believe it's going to be amended to a maximum of 20 days, or not to exceed 20 days. That does not mean that Mr. Tracy will necessarily be with us for, for 20 days. Um, that is yet to be uh, fully disclosed, but as a fiscal conservative that he's proven himself to be, I, I believe Mr. Tracy will be um, moving on to the other district obligations that he has when uh, we feel that Ms. Steady has made full transition. I don't want anyone to think that this is being done because she, she lacks uh, background experience in, in the department that she's going to oversee. It's truly a matter of everyone needing a transition period and the opportunity to di digest information and resource information, uh, placement of files, and just adjusting to a totally new environment. There isn't a, kin, a person out there that walks into an organization the size <coughs> are, of ours without having initial questions and, and aid needed to get adjusted. And um, I believe that's important to clarify also. Uh, the policies, uh, there are policies regarding finance that Don mentioned, and I'd just like to thank Don for the work that he's done with that. We'll have the first reading, and after two, sub two readings uh, is when we would be taking a, a vote in a future action meeting to confirm those into formal policy. Thank you for that, Don. And that's the end of my report. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to take the time to to over, uh, take a, a look at uh, Ms. Deddy's uh, resume, you'll see that uh, she's not a personnel issue in the forefront that she was alleged to be, and uh, that if these are issues, then we need more of them. Um, I'd like to uh, let you know that shortly in the near future, Dr. Bose and um, Mr. Weir will be planning a press conference for this very fine woman so that you'll, the media will have an opportunity to meet her and ask her questions and we will videotape that, uh, that press conference so that we can uh, share her with the community at large. Uh, we're quite excited and hope that she will prevail in tonight's vote. Um, any questions of Mr. Sherrill on finance? Thank you. Mr. Hill, personnel. Yes, yeah, Senator Personnel, as uh, Mrs. Shear pointed out, we do have uh, Carol to uh, oh, vote sorry. on tonight. We also have another, a number of other people that we want to uh, recommend for approval this evening, and, uh, and I ask for your support in those items. End of my report. Thank you, sir. Any questions of Mr. Hill? I'd just like to say that I'm glad to see that James Malley has uh, decided to stay with us here at the ESC. I'm sure he's going to be missed at his previous school, Pembroke, but... Uh, I'm glad to see that he's decided to um, remain with us here. Okay. Legislator, Mr. Scher. Well, I have no report at this given time. Um, okay. I I'd like to have some follow-up information though, from the district as soon as possible, though, regarding the charter schools legislation. If you recall, I made a request of that, but that was to directed to uh, Dr. Clark at that time. And, we could follow up with the, the stronger uh, summary of what exactly that legislation is going to bring to the table. I'd appreciate it. I'll be glad to send it to my head. 
Okay, thank you. I have some uh, general stuff from the PSBA, but I'd like to see the actual legislation myself. That always gives you the full details of what exactly is going on. I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Mr. White's technology, please. No report. Okay, any questions? Yes, please. Um, I guess my questions uh, would have to be directed to Mr. Weir um, in response to watching the board replay of August 12th and the presentation in which he made to the board uh, about the um, technology needs uh, being recommended by the administrators um, at the secondary level, in particular those at the IMCs or the libraries, mainly at the high school. Um, and I appreciate the fact that uh, notice was given and recognized by both Mrs. Mangel and, and yourself, Ken, to the uh, curriculum component committee that uh, Dr. Hassler uh, and I had, uh, and, and Bill, you didn't mention you, Bill, but you were there too. Um, we had one uh, meeting to begin the process of developing what I thought was the board's desire, and that was for us to develop a curriculum component that would drive the technology needs in the district um, through our curriculum. Um, so I come tonight with just some basic questions for clarification. Uh, I don't want to duplicate things uh, that are being done by two separate committees. I was not aware that there was two separate committees. Uh, Dr. Hassler informed me, I think it was Monday, that administrators had begun the process of meeting sometime in February to discuss technology needs, and um, that we were working at the same time um, to develop the component. Um, I was under the impression that we were given the charge and, and told to go ahead with this um, specifically um, to come up with specific curriculum recommendations um, on how to use uh, the monies earmarked in capital uh, improve in, in the capital improvement fund. Uh, obviously I was mistaken um, but I need either for you Mrs. Mangle or somebody to clarify for me why we are discussing buying equipment and establishing workstations, I think it's 56, at the uh, library, all with internet access, prior to determining what our curriculum needs are and how that equipment is supposed to enhance the educational experience at that level of the children. Um, I also would like to know when was it determined by the board that that was what needed to be done first. I recognize that it's an administrative recommendation for that, um, and, and I understand that. However, uh, working on this committee, uh, asking people to come in and to help with the development of the curriculum, I fear that we're putting the cart before the horse, and that we may run into further confusion um, if we don't establish the curriculum needs across the board, and that would include what do we want the computers at the libraries to do for the children that use them? How is the internet and internet access on 56 stations going to do that? Um, there was an article in the paper just the other day on the process that many parents are facing now on what to consider when buying a PC for their college student. And the first thing, the first job that must be tackled, according to PC's magazines, PC Magazine's 10th Service and Reliability Survey, was that the first job to tackle would be the software. And in relationship to the district, that would be our curriculum needs and how we would address those needs through our software. Um, the second thing that you need to consider after that is decided 
would be your hardware needs and uh, all the things that go along with that. So I'm simply asking for some clarification, uh, better direction to avoid duplicity and confusion. And I'd also like to know if this committee, as well as Ken's committee, needs to develop financial plans to go along with them since obviously 400000 or $440,000, I think the ESC improvements come to around 360, uh, can't possibly meet both of those agendas. So I would ask that uh, tonight, if possible, if we establish what is our agenda first and foremost, and what does this board want to do first? Do you want to develop the curriculum component to drive the technology, or are our equipment needs and all of the fine things that go along with that, internet access and everything, going to drive the expense of our curriculum component. I really do need some clarification on that. I'm not sure now whether it's shifted to a question to the board or whether it's still for me to react. Whoever. Uh, clearly, Dr. Hassler has been involved with any discussions, has been involved in any discussions that we had uh, related to our needs in the high school IMC, the high school library. Uh, there are computers there of at least four or five different makes and vintages. So we're talking about the inadequacies of what we find there now. Uh, Dr. Hassler has been included in those conversations when we visited the library and Dr. Cotter, and Dr. Hassler and the librarians and I met with Lou Nyman there. And we talked about the inadequacies of the current equipments and our wishes for the future. I think you're very correct in that we need to define areas of responsibility and agree on areas of responsibility. I have no problem with that. That's essential for our moving forward. Uh, what I was doing at the last meeting was setting the stage for what I believed we would be bringing forth as a recommendation for the board to consider in the future. Uh, certainly, you would be involved in that prior to coming before the board. You and other members of your committee would be involved with that. Uh, certainly, if we're going to have any success here, we need to work cooperatively. We need to share information, and we need to make sure that we're at least in agreement regarding process and the parameters of responsibilities. I don't think any of us have any problem with that. So all of this is ahead in the next few weeks. Um, at the August 12th meeting, it was agreed that we would meet again on the, 20, on the fourth Thursday of September. Which is an additional meeting which is an additional visit. meeting for that month. We hope to meet with the librarians the first week of school and talk with them again. You know there's some personnel reassignments there, so there are some changed faces there. And uh, we will surely include you and keep you part of this process, you and your colleague Bill, and uh, other members of the committee that share the interest that you do. Uh, no recommendation has been formulated that's firm. No recommendation has taken shape at all. And we need to begin this process, but we need to begin to work earnestly toward that date, the fourth Thursday of August, is it the uh, of, uh, September, is it the 25th? I'm not the sure. 25th. The fourth Thursday of September. <coughs> so you're, we also need to decide, too, where the focus will begin between these two committees in, in being able to provide the technology um, tools that, that we're seeking out for our students and whether or not, uh, because we are looking on our committee, we are looking at it K through 12. I understand. And I would hope that, you know, we could keep that in mind as we proceed because that's what my understanding was, was the best way to proceed. We're talking initially about the inadequacies of what we have prior to talking about what more we would like. So there's, they're closely connected and one leads and steps right into the next. And we'll include you in that, to be sure. Yeah, I'd appreciate uh, another visit out to the library too. And Dr. Hassler is the coordinator of all that, so okay. he'll, bring us, he'll bring us along. Okay. Or, take us, or take us along. Take us along. Well, okay. I, also, I also need of, some clarification yeah. here. Um, Number one, I guess, who, who 
I understand that you're the liaison to curriculum, but this committee, I mean, who formed the committee? Is this uh, a I took the initiative, um, Mr. Weitz, and okay. I contacted um, Donna Mangle as K through 12 curriculum liaison. Okay, so. And I asked her so, uh, if it would be appropriate, since there was so much discussion about curriculum driving technology. But was there, was there a direction that was given that said from this board that uh, the curriculum component will come first and this committee will establish that fact? Well, I, that's I don't, what my I've initial heard, question was tonight. I mean, well, I understand I that, that we, but your comment was you were under the impression that there was a curriculum that was going to drive the purchases, and I don't remember any of that information coming no, to light at a board meeting. No, I didn't say purchases. I said there was, there was curriculum that was going to drive, I mean, there was going to be, uh, the curriculum was going to drive the technology needs. Okay, so we can change the words a little bit to say that this committee would drive the technology needs which would intend, in turn, lend itself to whatever purchases there would be with the remaining monies in the capital account. I still no, don't remember, I still don't remember that direction coming from this board no, to you or to any committee at this point. I, can I ask that was my, my initial reason for concern. I had spoke to Bob about it. Uh, he um, said that uh, he had not gotten any any definitive direction well, to once begin again, that, that process. That is exactly my so point. There I was no. So then I consulted with Mrs. Mangle about it and asked her if she felt it would be appropriate. Well, let's not say that plans should not go forward from the administration about what they believe they can possibly do with the funds that are available to them by holding them up and saying that curriculum, a curriculum committee, will decide what technology will be deployed when this board hasn't decided that. I mean, one of the aspects that, I, that we continue to lose, uh, and a thing that perhaps it was not written well enough in the plan that I compiled, was to talk about that there are parallel tracks. And the idea of the plan was to be able to take parallel tracks, one of which was curriculum, one of which was infrastructure, and say that this is a direction that we will go in. And for all of us to, to agree to that, and to be able to use the plan as some kind of a roadmap. We have yet to agree on any of that. So to hear that there's some independent direction going on at this time concerns me because I don't think this board has made that. Uh, Plus, it's my understanding, Mrs. Krieger, that a lot of your concerns with, came from an elementary level and relationships you have with women that are working with the computers, volunteer volunteers, the elementary in the elementary level. I have also you know, I, I encourage not to have anybody's spirit of volunteerism broken in any way. And whatever volunteerism is wished to do can only add to what other efforts are being done and directed. Sure, that's fine, but everything was to be directed in key leadership and the point man being Dr. Hassler. I mean, this is what we're paying him to do and to oversee. Um, at, at the last board meeting, there is a wish on, on the part of high school staff. We, we all recognize the common denominator in two things. One, all schools have a library. So we started with a common denominator, an area in which technology could use enhancement. We all agreed to that, curriculum or not. Uh, our libraries need enhancements, technological enhancements. Secondly, all students, despite whatever disparity can be found in the elementary, all students eventually get to one high school. Uh, also, those students, more than ever, need to be properly prepared, et cetera, because they're moving on to college. So the administration uh, has requested an opportunity to bring to this board, recognizing our responsibility to the budget, and only we approve the spending, uh, to come forward with plans that they have starting at uh, the high school in, uh, in the library, and uh, moving then into the following month the opportunity to present their wishes on the uh, middle school level. And then I believe it's in the following year, once we catch all the elementaries together and coordinate them, because each elementary is doing a different thing, to bring them around and start formulating a budget to accommodate them in the next uh, budget period. So uh, this no, was all in no that meeting. That was all. This was all in that meeting. No one answered uh, my and question I, about the financing end of doing that. Shall we also develop a financial plan or suggestions to a financial plan? on how to best pay for that. Do we? I would expect that from the administration. They know that budget as well as we do. No, but I'm saying, I mean, are we, are we to just rely upon our ability to increase our budget um, to pay for those kinds of things, or should we also be looking 
at alternative ways to finance because Dr. House, would you like it to gets that? expensive. <laughs> I don't want to prolong this discussion now, but I think we can Sorry. definitely address it on the 25th. But I, I really don't see these issues as being that far apart. Right. We were looking at what we could do immediately that would address things that are in place, as Ken said, that we need to upgrade. The whole area of a K-12 <laughs> curriculum is going to take us some time to look at what's in place, how it fits the standards, how do we want to integrate it, do we want to use laboratories, do we want to... Um, add computers to, to classrooms. So what we were looking at in, in the committee that Charisse is talking about is just some recommendations on how to better integrate technology into, into our existing curriculum. I'm not sure at this point we should come back with a dollar figure as much as a philosophical um, recommendation on here's how we should go and see if the board can buy that. And then if the board says yes, then we can come back with a cost on it too. A lot of financial critical too. I think we really need to just look at where we're going, and that's what we were trying to do, to say here's our existing curriculum, here's how we as curriculum people see how it can be integrated. And we saw libraries, as a, or it was expressed that libraries were a starting point. I think that was a very, very positive meeting <coughs> that night. Everybody was here, but, but you, Mrs. Krieger, you were on vacation. And there seemed to have been a pretty decent uh, <coughs> accord that night, not only up here on the board, looking forward to the kickoff of movement and technology, but I also felt it coming from the audience. And, and reflected in their comments at the podium. But I think we've got to let these people do their jobs. And when they bring it here, then, then we start to scrutinize. I think we, they, they, all, they have a day-to-day -day obligation and, and responsibility to prepare to come to us at the end of this, uh, in September. I think we just let them do that job and bring it here and we, and we go from there. Please, As opposed me. to... Excuse me, but... You know, I, I understand that, and, and I'm not questioning questioning that at all. Uh, my 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 question stemmed from the fact that um, I believed, and was led to believe anyway, that this board wanted curriculum to drive the technology needs of the district. <coughs> Ms. Liaison, I pursued at least beginning that process to do that in a timely fashion. Um, I expect the scrutiny of not only the administrators but the public as well when that report comes forward. Um, that, but I, I don't understand, I don't know where the administration got their direction to come to the board with their own immediate plans of where, of, of what the first phase should be on starting, on starting technology. I, I don't know where that, let me, let me speak let me, to that first. Uh, let me, let me, Go let me ahead, get into it. Let me, because I was in the middle of this part of this, and part of the dialogue that went on with this. I was, uh, uh, when, uh, when this technology issue all came forward, I always maintained that we needed to know, know what we're going to do with the technology as we buy it, which, which ties into curriculum. You've got to know how that technology is going to improve the education of our students. Uh, philosophically, we all know that uh, computers are here, and computers are going to be with us forever, and we know we've got to improve, we've got to do something with them, but we all got to know where we're going and how does curriculum tie those together, and that has been my point from day one. But to attack that whole thing and get that all together, we've been having a lot of trouble getting that ball started and getting it rolling down the hill. Uh, your committee and uh, you and Bill Allen with Dr. Hassler have started that dialogue to how curriculum is going to be upgraded with the use of technology. But we know that we, uh, in the immediate today, we have needs for technology improvement in certain areas. And we want to move as rapid as we can uh, in that direction while we continue the effort to determine where the curriculum can be used to drive our technology. Speaking to the uh, administration that I have a number of times at these meetings and other times, I said, we've got to break this thing down so we can handle it and move ahead in pieces. And I says, what, where can we do something that we all know that we need improvements and things that would be beneficial to most of the students? The administration has came back and said that the best place that they believe they could start, well, we all agree, basically should agree that a need is in the IMCs high school first, junior highs, and, element, and, and so forth. 
and that they were going to come because the, as Dr. Hassler just said, the curriculum portion of it, where we're going to go with curriculum, is months away because it takes a lot of work and a lot of effort to decide how we're going to tie all the curriculum together with technology. And we not, may not be able to act on that particular phase of technology until next year sometime, early next year. But we could move ahead with upgrading the IMCs. Now, when the, as, I, as, as I understand, when they come with report on the upgrade to the IMCs, uh, they're going to tell us what they're going to need, how that's going to help the students, and what improvement's going to be, and how that's going to link in with the technology as it comes down the line. And I think, I think we're all saying the same words. We're, we, didn't, uh, we want to get technology started. We want to find a way to do it. We want you to continue to move as rapid as you can with curriculum and get that curriculum so we understand how technology is going to help it. But before, let's get ahead where we can tomorrow. If we can get, if we know we needed the IMCs, and we know I can bring those up to speed to get those computers and the, and the technology within the libraries uh, up to speed and start that work immediately. Let's get that done in parallel with the work you're doing on curriculum. I don't see where there are two different paths. There are they're, they're two paths, but they're, on the, they're going to the same point. I you're, think you're we're saying the same right. thing. And my point is that, that we might as well just all do it together then, rather than have two separate groups. And those of us who advocate beginning at the high school IMC will <laughs> seek your endorsement. We will seek your support. We will seek your understanding. You, Bill, Vivian, whomever. We will hope that you will become advocates for that <clears throat> program as well, because we need your voice and your advocacy <laughs> along with ours or we probably will fail when we come back to this table. We need you with us. So we'll do our, we'll do our best to, Mr. to reach out. Just question. so I have a little clarification. The, the, the charge that Mrs. Mangle gave you for the meeting on the 25th, you will be addressing strictly the high school. The needs, our intent, the current needs at the Our high intent is to be as well prepared as we can be to speak about the high school IMC only. Right, okay. Only. Right. And Second. I have no idea today whether we'll be able to fit in 56 stations or not. We may not. I have no idea today whether we will advocate that all 56 be connected to the Internet. That's all ahead of us between now and that date. I have another question, if I may. We received a $110,000 grant, the Links to Learn grant. Where did that money go? We're opening a new lab in the high school for the new school year. It's in what we used to call the business ed department on the second floor above the, I, above the IMC, above that? the library. There are 28 stations in the Link to Learn lab and two stations on the next wall in the teacher planning center so that the faculty can work with that equipment. And so there are 30. Saying we needed 56 additional over and above that 28 we just, we just put in. Well, this is, this is, a, this is a classroom okay. scheduled okay. for okay. classes. Okay. 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 This is a classroom fully scheduled with okay. 28 students every every class period. Got, we were very fortunate to get 30 workstations there. It's our second new lab. Last year we got a new lab from the school to work funds, which is grant money, and this is the second new lab for the high school, so we're very pleased about that. We have a question. Last question for you, Ken. Um, you read a litany of labs at the secondary level. I don't have that list with you me tonight. Have do you know off the top of your head how many computer labs in total we currently have? There's seven labs at the high school. Okay. There's seven labs in the three middle schools. Each. No, no. Three at Pendale, the larger school. Okay. Two at Penfield, and two at Pembroke. So there's seven labs at the high school. I believe the seventh lab is a very small lab actually because that's in the art department, and it's not it's not 28. It may be six or seven units, seven, six or seven workstations in the art department. But that's strictly for art. Right. That's strictly for okay. art. Thank you. Graphic design for the art department. Okay, anybody Madam else? Person. Yeah, I have a yes. question as a result of something that Ms. Krieger said that I'd like to have cleared up. It's a relationship to the curriculum committee that was referenced as she spoke. Uh, a little red flag went up. You you went on to talk about philosophies, which is one thing, than, than a committee of community members that's going to be deciding curriculum goals, is that correct? No. That she's, no. This, this, okay. this is just a little volunteer group that I... Okay, no, no. you said to I establish curriculum goals. No, that's Please. okay. I know okay. you said you wanted a short meeting. I just wanted to be clear because... Excuse me? 
if there, if, if, as she had stated it, I interpret it to mean that perhaps the committee there, and I think other people in this community would want to know, um, that that's more of a professional educators or uh, certainly community members that have background and experience in curriculum because that is such a highly detailed um, um, professional aspect of our school system. So uh, as I was listening, I just wanted to be sure what the scope of the committee and that charge would be. And even myself, when I was uh, had responsibility with the finance liaison, my committee was basically made up of community members, but community members who also had a strong background in the area of finance and accounting. And, and so there was a match between what they had to bring to the table and the committee on which they served. And I just wanted to be clear before, if I misunderstood it, maybe perhaps I'm the only person who um, heard that, that would ever think that. But I just wanted to be clear that that wasn't the case. And it was the curriculum Okay, any courses. further questions of David White's technology? <laughs> No you happy with yourself, Mr. Warren? No report. That's where I started. <laughs> now that we're in the weeds? Okay. High school expansion, Mr. Modi. Thank you. Good. On August 13, 1997, the Commonwealth Court issued a ruling regarding prevailing wages for public works. As the board may be aware or may not be aware, you realize the legislature passed legislation or passed a law which affected the minimum wage earlier this year. An injunction was filed, and of course, it's been held in litigation uh, all this time. Uh, in conjunction with that, until that ruling was set forth <coughs> last week, some 1,200 public projects in the Commonwealth were delayed. Our high school expansion project will now move forward in accordance with the following schedule. Plan Con F, board approval, August 21st, 1997, and you'll see that you have a green sheet tonight, we will be voting on this. Invitation letters to bidders, which hopefully will go out tomorrow. Mr. Wood has told me they will. Advertise for bids August 25th. Begin printing ME, Mechanical Engineering Biro and Associates is handling that August 25th. Begin printing BRFA, that's the architects, Breslin and Ridyard, August 29th. Begin distribution to bidders September the 3rd. Hopefully receive bids October the 2nd. And I have an asterisk saying that the bid date could be extended to October the 6th, 1997, if contractors need more time, and I'll explain why. Review bids with Board of Pro um, excuse me, re re review bids with Board of Education October the 7th. Award bids and approve Plan Con G October the 16th. Sign contracts and issue notice to proceed November the 17th. Uh, there is some concern regarding the bidding arena since there will also be many projects bid at the same time. Uh, however, many area contractors have expressed an interest in our project and their desire to bid. So we can now proceed. Okay. And the report. Mr. Mosey, we do have a green sheet on that, I'm sure. Yes, you do. I missed mine. It's got to be somewhere. Okay. It's just for the approval plan con F, which is the construction okay, document. That's, all right, that's easy. Okay, I have that. All right, thank you very much. You're Any welcome. questions of Mr. Mosey? I just have a comment. That sure. As a board member, I have a concern that really what's happened now with this whole prevailing wage thing, the way I understand it, I mean, think about it now. All these projects which have been held up are going to let loose. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have you're going to have contractors with with more with plenty of tons of work. If, if we will not be in a market, it won't be our market. It'll be their market. Okay, you know what I mean. Absolutely. And uh, we're going to have to watch all this very closely. That uh, you know, fortunately, I believe Mr. Breslin put a put a pretty fair price in there. I think it was somewhere above $100 a square foot or somewhere around there. But I tell you what, I bet you'll be close to $110 a square foot until it's all said and done. Because we're not, it's not in favor of us right now, and it's not our fault. I mean, and I don't know whose fault it is, but it's well, I'll blame it on the department, and the whole. The legislature, the whole prevailing wage thing, because in the long run that didn't help us anyway, because right. all the contractors in the area all sent in their the wages to Philadelphia area, so we're not going to get a break there. A and B is again, it's it's their market, not ours. So we're going to need it's art has a real challenge. Mr. Yes, Mr. Clemens, Mr. Wood, and I have been discussing that for weeks. Um, we we were hoping that, in fact, uh, I, I'll let you in a little secret. We were even thinking of of uh, abandoning the reimbursement because the amount would not be that much for a school our size was only a penny on the dollar 
which would have come to something like 120,000. Well, over the term of the bond, it would have been 439,000. Right. But in current dollars, it was only 279,000. And it would have been a very tough decision for me to bring before this court, but we realized that it might be worth sacrificing that to get the project moving. Mm -hmm. And as Mr. Clemens said, we could have probably gotten some real good bids. But this is a concern that Art and I have had for weeks that, you know, when it, if they release this thing, everybody's going to be going out there for bid. And 1,200 is probably, a, I don't know, I don't think that's even accurate. It might be more than that, to tell you the it's truth. The number that the Department of Labor and Industry shared with us. But but doesn't the size of our project and the magnitude, uh, we know, hope it will. are we not the uh, bigger should, guys? We absolutely. hope it will. Yeah, quite frankly, though, the size of our project limits some bidders because of the ability of getting bonding. Right. on a project that right. size, and That's also, right. if they're bidding a number of projects, they have a limitation on what their bond level is. Right. Okay. And also, personnel right. level as well, too, because of the fact that um, they're going to be trying to grab as much work as they can, sure. okay. and consequently, they're going to be looking at, you know, tying, tying up a lot of equipment and personnel for two years is going to be a big commitment on the part of the contract. Sure. I think what we're saying here is we should not delay this project in any way. Correct. We're not. We have to get it out to bid as soon as possible. We're not. I just gave you the okay. schedule, and you will get a copy of the schedule in your minutes. It's okay. not being delayed. Believe Patrick me. and Art, I appreciate you keeping on task with that. And uh, right across the street, Patrick, I know you're working with the Votex uh, building uh, program also. Any other further questions, uh, Mr. Mosin? Okay, North Monco Technical Career Center, Mr. Allen. I can give a report on the building committee. The uh, expansion project over there is moving. Um, we're going to have the rain delays like everybody else had. But the contractor, as of two weeks ago, or last week, still believed that he would be done his portion of the project at the end of November, or excuse me, October. And that uh, after he has done his part of the contract, then the students and classes will start doing those parts of the project that they will doing be doing such as electrical work some rough some uh, finished plumbing work all the things that the tech school students can do for a classroom curriculum they will be doing during this winter end of report okay any further questions uh, mr allen thank you sir mark science partnership mr whites no report any questions Long-range planning, I have no report. Uh, any questions? Uh, Long-range planning, and probably as a committee, I would think should be uh, uh, dissolved effective next board meeting. And uh, this whole show is Dr. Betty Robinson's. And if she needs a special committee or a special liaison, she's just to let us know. Okay? All righty. Meet and discuss, Mr. Hill. Yes, as, uh, as the board is aware, uh, we have, uh, we're trying to uh, get the group together uh, for to discuss with the administrators regarding uh, salary improvements and, uh, and uh, job descriptions, the whole area of, uh, in that area for discussion, and that we're trying to get that scheduled early on, and uh, Dr. Bose is going to, uh, is working with that to set up a date for that. In parallel with that, of course, uh, uh, Mrs. Mangle has her committee of meet and discuss with the, with the teachers on basically some of the same subjects, and the uh, and there is the committee uh, with the uh, with all the other staffing. I think you're chairing that, Mr. Allen. I don't know if I'm chairing, but I'm one. You're on that committee. I'm okay. chairing. Yes. That's the end of the report. Okay. Thank you. Any questions of uh, Mr. Hill? Okay. Continue, Mr. Hill. Oh, municipal relations. As we had one meeting uh, several months ago with the with the uh, seven municipalities, and at that time. We agreed to get together in the fall, September, October time frame. And one of the items of discussion that will be primarily discussed at that meeting is how the reassessments uh, that is currently being completed will affect all of us and so forth. Those are still being worked on. Many appeals are in that process. So um, that meeting will probably not happen until maybe October or maybe even November. Okay. okay any further questions of Mr. Hill? Only in relationship to that, uh, Don, there, uh, an area of finance that I didn't mention under my summary is one that's not printed here, but I guess is intended to be added. It deals with the reassessments, and, and Mr. Bartle and Mr. Uh, or our superintendent will 
we'll phrase that for everyone. As you know, the, the appeal process is closed as far as filing the appeals. I believe there's a date in October when the, the appeals should be closed. And I'd just like to suggest that perhaps right subsequent to that period of time may be the date, you know, when we may want to target to meet with our local municipal leaders. And because that is the major topic area, and it will give us a lot more uh, concrete information to be under discussion with them. So when we have all that information together, to, there's a meaningful meeting, we'll schedule it. Right, and we're to, to use that date as a guide as to when we schedule that. That would be my suggestion as a member of the committee. Thank it's you. November 1st. November 1st. All hearings must be completed before the board by November 1st. So okay, so our solicitor November. answered that. It's <laughs> November 1st, so perhaps even though we did choose October as a target date, we may want to look for something right after that instead. Thanks. I agree. Okay, any other questions? Okay, young Mr. Berger, can you check uh, back if we can change the tape now and, and get all the audience of citizens on one tape? Half an hour. There's still half an hour? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Keep me posted, young man. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is your time. Uh, please step forward. Your name and address would be appreciated. Yes, ma'am. Rosalie Elias, Montgomery Township. Um, as you know, at present, we've lost three key, highly experienced special ed employees, um, one director and two supervisors. Um, looking through tonight's minutes, I uh, noticed a recommendation to hire James Nally as a full-time special ed supervisor, which um, I would applaud the effort to do that. I presume that we still have the services of special ed supervisors Constance Ames and Terry Freeman, is that correct? That's that correct. Uh, would bring us to a total of three special ed supervisors and I think as you know we had had four last year to help bring us up to compliance. Um, that still leaves our district short one special ed supervisor and Based on the special education deficits and Mr. Shipman's credentials, we still also need another person to coordinate or oversee um, our special ed supervisors, our special ed programs, and our IE student IEPs. So um, I would like to know um, what your plans are at present to remedy these vacancies. Well, your assumption that we need another supervisor to supervise the supervisors is not necessarily so. Uh, the supervisors themselves have the credentials to conduct IEPs, assign state documents that uh, are a part of the uh, classification and reporting system for handicapped children. Uh, that will not change. We are actively engaged in the pursuit of a fourth supervisor, so we'll have a full complement of supervisors at the earliest possible, possible opportunity because uh, I, uh, we share your calculation that leaves us with one net uh, 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 left in the, in the cohort of four supervisors and that vacancy will be filled as soon as we can select the person uh, to offer that job to. So then how do you plan to remedy um, the, the, the portion of Judy Clark's position that was so integrally involved in special ed, um, how, how do you plan to fill that? The supervisors will continue to do what they've always done. So you're saying they don't need any supervision, they don't need any guidance no, in special ed? No, you didn't hear ed? me say that. I, I, in the interest of time, I would be glad to give you the job description, invite you to read it, and, and call me with any questions you may have about it. I think that will answer your questions. It's a job description about which I made reference in my opening remarks that has been reviewed by the council for this school district who are special education experts. I would certainly be glad to share that with you uh, as I will share it with anybody else who would like to read it and <coughs> follow up after you've had a chance to uh, study it yourself with any questions you may have. So then my understanding is you plan to hire no one other than one other special ed supervisor. That is correct? I'm sorry. I Your plan that. is to hire no one else other than one special ed supervisor? Well, we have one special education supervisor vacant. We also have at least three other on the, people on this staff 
with the certification to do what Judy Clark did. Three other people already on staff. So you're saying they will double do double duty? I wouldn't say double because it might be 5%, 10%, 15%, but to suggest it's 15% is inaccurate. Um, I'm sorry, but I, I happen to, I, I work, I spent a lot of time working with Judy Clark and I know how much time she invested in special ed. For uh, we, we serve, the school district services, I, I don't need to tell you how many students it services, it's well over 2,000 students, it's like 18% of our student population. And quite frankly, I, I, I don't see how not having someone with the kind of credentials that she had. I'm not saying Mr. Shipman isn't a wonderful person and he won't do a wonderful job. I don't, I don't, I'm not trying to say that. I'm just saying I see a real deficit here in terms of special ed. I understand and what you're saying. I don't share your appreciation of that condition or your assessment of that condition. Uh, I, had, I, well think we've, I think we have anticipated that possibility and we have provided a plan that will not uh, uh, compromise the programs and the services that children in this school district already receive. I hope I hope that assessment is correct because I feel that our students have received a superlative program and I would hate to see that become diminished. That is my main concern and um, I I hope we, time will tell you know whether or not that is an adequate assessment. My own personal opinion is that I don't see how that can be adequate but Time will tell. Ms. Thank Elias, you. Let me just add that Mr. Shipman will be very much involved as, as Judy Clark was. Uh, Dr. Bose and Dr. Hassler are both qualified themselves, and I believe there's others, that uh, are qualified to evaluate the supervisors. That so function they required by the state. They are qualified to evaluate the four supervisors. Also, one of the specific areas of expertise that was relayed to us through all of the references from, on Mr. Shipman was his ability to keenly mediate between parents and the district to, a, to satisfactory terms in the IEPs. He will probably uh, spend more time than has been usual in that process. I'm not questioning that. It's the expertise in special education itself that I'm questioning. It's not whether one has litigation experience or whether one has ability to, to uh, work with other supervisors per se. It's that special ed component that I think is so vital that is missing. Now, I don't know whether Dr. Bose has special ed in his background. I don't know whether Dr. Hassler has it also. I, th that's information no, don't. I don't have. Neither one of us do. But our licenses enable us to supervise the supervisors. Even with a lack of special ed? Absolutely. That's our disheartening. License, our, well, that's the way the Commonwealth established it. I think if you have an argument, you should argue it in Harrisburg. I'm telling you the law, the rules and regs, and the certification requirements, that's the way it is. That an assistant superintendent and a superintendent and certain other licensed people already in the school district are enabled under these rules and regs and the laws that govern the operation of these programs to supervise the supervisors. I hear what you're saying, and I appreciate what you're saying. I just find it disheartening that no one here seems to feel that a lack of special ed experience is important. Thank you very much. Can, can I say something there? Because I know we're all struggling for the words, and, and I've seen the information that was given to us um, and again, we've talked many times about 25 years of experience in this area. The issue seems to be the license. And again, as Dr. Bose just mentioned, there are a number of people that have licenses and no experience. The information that I seem to have is that Mr. Shipman has the experience but not the license, which is why I believe, based on all the information that's presented to me, that he is capable of understanding every nuance of the law of special education and able to deliver the programs to our students, but lacks the license that Judy Clark had, for example. But I don't know if it's fair to equate their years of experience in special ed, but to say, I mean, I am not concerned at this point in time, and time will tell. That, that Mr. Shipman does not have the experience to be able to work 
with the supervisors of special ed and the coordination of their function and delivering a high quality program that North Penn has and I hope will continue to have in the future. It is, it seems to be the issue of the piece of paper, but look at 25 years of experience in this area. To me, it's not just a piece of paper. It, to me, it would be much more important to have someone who had experience actually teaching a child of special needs or who had experience teaching a gifted child who would really understand what that education really involves. That to me is what would really be critically important. I, and I won't, I won't deny that that's a valuable aspect that, that this person could bring uh, to work with the staff and perhaps the supervisors. But there are many cases uh, in industry and many cases uh, in just any profession where there is a piece of paper that says, I'm qualified, but I've only been doing this. I taught one year, and today I'm qualified because I got my license. If we had a person that had that license, would we, any of us be happier today to know we had somebody that perhaps taught for one or two years and had the license, or somebody that has 20? I, I understand your concern. I'm not debating whether or not he's not. I'm just saying that But your that concern is for the quality of our program, I believe, and yes. the services to deliver the students. And, and I just want you to understand from my perspective that everything I have heard about this man and 25 years of experience says he will continue to deliver the type of program that the parents of North Penn have come to expect. But let me add perhaps a vignette that might give um, a, a different insight into this dilemma. It's a, it's a statewide problem. In 1992, uh, the Department of Education of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania grandfathered everybody in that position who did not have that license and said they could continue to service in that position even without the licenses because of the shortage. Now, that if, Ms. if Mr. Shipman and others like him had not decided from time to time they would change jobs, they would continue to be fully qualified because of the grandfather language regarding the super, uh, regarding the certification requirements issued by the department in 1992. Now perhaps that's going to happen again. I'm only supporting what Mr. White is trying to convey, that certainly we can't overlook 25 years plus of experience during this job without the license uh, and, and uh, think that the license as a focal point outweighs and distracts us from considering anything else. The reality of it is this is a market of uh, shortage and uh, we're lucky to get a person even uh, like this with this kind of a certification to do the job we have to do here. This lies also the departure of Dr. Clark and subsequent manufacturing of a controversy here has caused us to give great scrutiny to the whole situation. Dr. Bose has been asked by my, myself specifically this week, and as we reviewed everything, that uh, <coughs> there may be a need, uh, or we're, if not approaching closely, the need to add another supervisor, if not two. Exactly. And if that provides you any comfort, I hope it does. It's not a promise, but it's uh, research that's going on right now that may result in the need for additional supervisors. Because Judy did fill in a, f she basically was working as a, in that capacity also, you know, so yes, that that does that that that, that, that does make me feel better, but it, But that research and, is going on now and we will come forward when that and research is You're finished. also saying that legally we have no problems with any deficits that, that Mr. Schiffman might have, that we don't need another person who, who because well, it was legally, my understanding from what, what I had I read. And to tell you I talked to three attorneys, I had their opinion and their revision of our job description and even the reporter's second article of its three article or four articles on this topic quoted another Department of Education source saying this can be done. This can be properly accomplished with the, with the reference to the job description and the title, all of which has been done. So legal problems, no, we shouldn't have any legal problems. We'll file the reports, they'll be subject to audit, We've already been told there will be no audit, special audit because of this. We are not unique. I don't know how many school districts like us there are among the 501 in the Commonwealth, but I know there are many who have the same situation that North Penn does, 
their operating programs. I don't know whether they're as good as our programs. They probably we are We have not. outstanding programs in this community. And probably that's why we have so many parents who seek us out when they're changing residences because of their children's needs. There's no and, doubt about that. And know that this school district has a fine reputation. We don't intend that that will suffer whatsoever. I'm encouraged to hear that. No. And I, I'm very encouraged to hear your comments, Mrs. Mangle, about you know the possibility of having additional supervisors to meet the needs of these students. That would go a long way to help to help allay concerns that I might have. And I guess time will tell. I guess we will all get, get to meet Mr. Shipman, and, and we will all um, get to interact with him, with our students. Uh, all of us who have special needs students will obviously get to know him and, and the new supervisors. So a hopefully, press conference will be arranged for him also. And I believe one of the first things he would wish to do is to meet with specific parent groups exactly. that are affiliated to the new <coughs> special. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else, please? Yes, sir. Mr. O'Donnell. Hello, Dr. Bose, uh, Mangle, Ken, how are you doing tonight? <laughs> Very well, thank you. Uh, just a couple of rhetorical questions. Dr. Bose, I uh, hope you don't start requesting combat pay. And Donna, I hope you don't uh, suggest we start paying it. Uh, Dr. Booz, I do appreciate your clarification comments tonight on these earlier newspaper issues because I've had phone calls and whatnot, and uh, I appreciate your clearing that up. Thank you. I really do appreciate that. It's kind of set me straight. Um, my understanding is that the audit is completed now? No. no. Oh, it's not? No, it is not. Oh, I had heard it was. It's in a final review phase, and, uh, review phase, and it's being uh, put in into written form. Oh, do we know when that'll be done then? Gosh, we, we, we wait daily. Okay. We wait daily. Um, okay, then I'll, I have two more questions on that. I'll skip that. We advertise for a uh, CFO between sixty-five and seventy thousand a year. I understand we're going to go five thousand above that. That was the offer to bring this person here. I'm curious if we lost anybody because we didn't advertise the higher salary of seventy-five. Do we know if we lost anybody? Well, I, I'm not sure how I might answer that. There were 79 applications. 79? Yes. Okay. So you had the... Uh, we, well, we had a range, Mr. O'Donnell, of, of, uh, of expertise, training, and background. Uh, everything from numbers crutchers, bright young people right out of a CPA program, uh, to seasoned school business administrators, which, frankly, I didn't expect we'd get. Uh, this person was an outstanding surprise uh, because we got a school business administrator type when we were really looking more for a comptroller auditor type, uh, CPA type. So we had, we had that many applications with that range. Um, but this person uh, was making um, uh, more than uh, $10,000 more elsewhere. About 82000 86.9 elsewhere. Okay. I had already, I had already and, and market, as you might imagine, market place forces influence this recommendation to increase it by five thousand dollars. Okay, I was just curious that we just want to lose anybody thinking right. as well, we're going to just accept the seventy thousand um, dollars. When a copy of the audit is done, I'd like to request a copy be mailed to my house. And I'm going to ask a question, what did that order cost when that's done, that's all. Thank you very much. All right, anybody else, please? Walk. I'm sorry. Take, <laughs> I'm sorry. Everybody watched you. I don't feel comfortable being up here either. Um, My name is Irene Christman. I'm from Montgomery Township. Um, I also have concern about uh, special ed. Um, one thing that I read was that um, this person, uh, Mr. Shipman, would not be in charge of, of special ed programming. And I guess that's where my concern would be, is that Judy did have 
that responsibility directly. So how, when and if we need new <coughs> programmings to be addressed, there are some issues that the supervisors cannot, I guess, do themselves, that they need that next <coughs> level. The supervisors are fully qualified to, uh, to, to participate in the IEP, the case conferences, render decisions, and give advice. Judy's main role was to supervise the supervisors. Obviously, one person can't take on a caseload and do the other thing, the management uh, and the uh, 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 administrative duties of the office as well. Um, so we fully intend to have a full complement of supervisors. Uh, when it comes to the annual evaluation and performance review of the supervisors. Uh, we've already said there are, those, there are those of us like me on this staff who are already licensed to do that. I'm not concerned with the supervisors being supervised. Your, your concern is the program. Well, the program origin and most of the program drive comes from the supervisors and the special ed teachers and the other people who participate in the case conference, including other specialists like psychologists, including the parents themselves and the outside experts that either party invites. That's where the program is developed. That's where the program is uh, generally negotiated, if it means the give and take of different points of views. And, and that's where the program is reviewed after it's uh, uh, determined and deployed. And that's still the purview of the supervisors. That won't change. We may consider that we need other supervisors in addition to those four we already have and have had for, I think uh, that we've had that number as long as anybody remember, uh, at least three years this school district has been staffed by four, perhaps longer. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll obviously review whether or not that number should be changed. The I guess program responsibilities then, flow out of the function and the office of the supervisors. I guess I think back to a few years ago when there were children that were being serviced by the IU, and Judy and Dr. Elko came to the board and asked for different types of programming to be offered. That's the type of stuff that the supervisors can't do, and that's the piece that he supposedly can't do either, according to the state. Oh, he can't? He, can. he can't participate in an IEP. That's it. He can recommend any kind of program that would be considered a part of an IEP, both from his over 25 years of knowledge of doing this in three other school systems and his general working knowledge about what's, what's current in the field and how to access experts who would tell him what's current in the field if, if that needs to be a matter of broadening his horizon or his perspectives. <coughs> And I must say, the supervisors we have, and those people like Mitch Edmonds, for instance, no longer be a Who supervisor. Wished to leave. He wanted to be a principal. Right. How could we say no to such a bright, talented person who wanted to be a principal? He is not going to give up his concern and his expertise for handicapped children and what kinds of programs best serve them. He'll I guess now, that's. He'll now enter into that uh, give and take in that continuous dialogue from the perspective of a principal, having not lost the experience and the perspective of a, of a special ed teacher and a special ed supervisor. I guess the other issue is that not only did we lose Judy, but we lost Mitch and Denise. And I understand like Terry was out most of the year for sick leave. So that's where the, you know, it's kind of scary to think that we don't have someone with that certification, and then we don't have experienced special ed supervisors as well. Well, I think one might draw that conclusion. It's like, is the glass half full or half empty? I think it's half full. I think we're getting somebody with 25 years experience doing this very same thing at a time where we've, we've experienced some unusual mobility. Terry Freeman's illness was a tragedy. We hope she's fully recovered. That lady was facing death without that surgery. Uh, uh, Jim Malley is stepping in. He's done a good job. Uh, he had experience in that temporary capacity. Now he's becoming full-time. We hope to attract somebody else to fill the fourth position. We're, we're going to consider whether there should be any other positions added. 
uh, and uh, the number of people in this school district who are in administrative positions who have uh, former special ed experience, and I'm talking about people like Mitch Edmonds will soon be, already is now, he's a, he's a principal this week, uh, will at, augment and supplement uh, the efforts that we make and the round table that is, that is convened by somebody like Fred Shipman on a regular basis to appraise, discuss, analyze, and uh, to consider what other improvements might be in order. That's very encouraging. I don't think we're going to stand still, and I don't think we're going to slip backwards. Last question I would have is, how does Mr. Shipman go about getting that certification? How long does that process take, and is that something that he is going to pursue? Well, uh, whether or not he wants to do that is, is his decision. I, I, I wouldn't, wouldn't be fair to me to reveal his age, but perhaps at his age he doesn't want to go back to school. Do you know how long that process is and what I it involves? Because I, I don't know how many credits it takes. I, I don't know what courses would have to be uh, 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 engaged and mastered, and uh, I, I have no idea about that. It wasn't a consideration when we looked at our options and thought, what is our best course of action? It couldn't be because if it's not a reality, it would have eliminated that course of action. You know, it's hard to eliminate fear or, or paranoia about it's the It's not Mr. fear. <laughs> Mr. Lear offered at the break to go and go in, pull his job description, and run it for everybody here. And I believe it's pretty articulate and pretty. He's <laughs> making faces. You went, you went a step beyond my <laughs> offer. <laughs> uh, and it's pretty clear, and I think it should uh, provide you. Yeah, answers and a source of comfort. Mr. Schmenkel, in answer to a lady's question, would Dr. Miller know how what how long it would take or what the requirements are? Oh. I would have to check the, the okay. certification regs and also uh, we would have to be in touch with the universities that provide that service. There okay. aren't there you don't aren't know off that the top of your head then. No, I'm okay. sorry I don't. Uh, could I ask for the draft resume? I understood it. it's been revised since we last received a draft for the position of people services. So since there was reference from doc, uh, Dr. Bose's statements that it's now been revised by our attorney since we received you the list. You said resume. I think you mean job description. Job description. I'm sorry. I'll be glad to give that to you. Because we'll, this is we'll a new tomorrow. this is a new modified one, right? Since we it's, last received. It's up to date as a result of, of the attorney's advice. Okay. Just forward that to us since. That hat was raised, and before it gets lost in the shuffle of tonight's business. Okay, folks. Okay, great. Thank you. Mr. Weir offered to run a copy. It's three pages long. I think. I'm not sure. For us to read from, if that would help, and, and you know, if it could help out here. Uh, I have to renege on that offer because yeah. he'd have to run three copies right. times how many people. Um, I hope we're going to have a short break. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we'll have a couple, uh, we'll have a, a number of copies that are made time. so that we can. At least share them in the rows or something. It's a great time. Thank you, Mr. Berger. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, five minutes uh, recess. Bill with audience of citizens, and um, anybody else wish to come forward and uh, address the board? Anybody? Time's up. Oh. Uh -huh. Aha. <laughs> 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 Thought we were home free. <laughs> Don't worry about Mr. Hill. He wears a Mickey Mouse watch. <laughs> it's always hyper. Um, I'm Barb De Silva from Upper Gwinnett Township. And um, I'm fortunate enough to have two exceptional children that, go, that attend this district. One is the remedial special ed and one is in gifted education. And I say I'm fortunate because I strongly feel that if they were not in this district, if we were in some other district, they would be farmed out some, to some other um, placement. <laughs> This district, compared to a lot of other districts, is very advanced in their special ed, special ed programming, which leads me to the, I've heard a, several people say that uh, this, this um, uh, Mr. Shipman has 25 years of experience, which is wonderful. However, I don't know what, to be honest, I don't know what um, Colonial School District does, has. I don't know what Quakertown has or Easton or any of those places, but school districts are not all the same. And just because he's worked someplace there doesn't mean he's been involved in the same programs that we've had here. And these have been excellent programs. And um, special ed has come a long way in 
last five years, definitely within the last ten years. And it's going to be um, going a long, a long way. So that's just put on the table for um, you to think about because the districts are not all the same. And right now this is a very good district. We've got excellent programs. And again, the programs that my son and my daughter are in, are in right now, they are not found in other districts. Um, the second thing is um, regarding um, the supervisors do, um, they are, what should I say, the mediators of the IEP process, which is true. However, um, I'm fairly certain that issues do come up during the IEP process where you have a need of a child that may not be run of the mill. And these supervisors go and talk and discuss with someone who is really officially involved in the special ed process, which historically was Judy Clark. And from what I understand, that component will be missing. Um, there are services or equipment or placement or programming issues that are going to crop up that supervisors, I feel, are not um, really given the responsibility or the authority to handle. And if those issues will have to be addressed by somebody higher up, and once that happens, that person becomes a member of the IEP team, because then they are influencing the program of that child. So I still feel that there is a void, significant void, with the description of this individual. And I don't know anything about him. He may be wonderful, but um, with this, the background that little of you have uh, told me, I think there's a void. Um, <coughs> food for thought. Thank you. Mm -hmm. and, and that the press conference that we will hold for Mr. Shipman will be open to the public. <coughs> and it might be a good opportunity for you not only to meet him, but those specific concerns may be put to rest by him personally. Also, if it gives, if it helps at all, in talking with Judy Clark today, she said her words, he is a wonderful man. He is wonderful. She, I said, oh, you know him? She goes, oh, sure. There's real familiarity. Uh, Judy Clark is an employee that left here in such a good disposition and with such a good spirit. It's not unlikely for these colleagues, uh, as part of uh, acclimating from Colonial to here, to pick up a phone to be more familiar with North Penn. It seems that that relationship would exist. I know superintendents between schools and schools and schools call each other all the time for advice, for, for uh, gosh, moral support probably. But um, I know that that relationship exists. It made me feel better in talking to Judy today that she knew so well professionally also. Yes, ma'am. Karen Clark, Montgomery Township. I think the dilemma and the concern has to do with um, a worry, perhaps, that we've changed the philosophy of the district from one of qualifications and certifications to experience. Now, I have no background, I don't know, I have no firsthand experience with special ed, but I do have firsthand experience with another department in this district where several years ago, a whole bunch of people were told, didn't matter how much experience you had, you weren't certified, and there was no requirement for certification, and a whole bunch of people walked out the door. It feels like perhaps the philosophy has changed, and experience might be more important than certification. Maybe if you could clarify if that has changed, it might make people feel better. I'm not sure I understand what you mean, Mrs. Clark. I mean, has there been a conscious change in the philosophy? I'm I think sure. that may be the perception that people I, are I worried speak about. I to what happened five years ago. Right. So I don't know what you're talking about. I do know that, and I said it before, I'll say it again. This is much like any economic field where there's a shortage in the supply. Market forces might dictate. In, in, in this case, let's, let's make it personal. You have so many dollars, you have to buy a new family car because the one you have now has been pronounced dead. So the car you buy is going to depend upon what's available, how much you can afford to invest in it, finance it, or otherwise acquire its services. There are forces at work 
in this employment field, just like in the business world, w which are going to influence what happens in a growing era of shortage. There is a growing era of shortage of people with these licenses. So, so what has happened has occurred with Mr. Shipman is not about a ph an educational philosophy. It's just about an supply and demand. That's part and of it. If as, as well as the good fortune is, in that in that condition and that environment, here's a person that's done this job. I can't emphasize that enough. Tw over 25 years in three other school districts. And I suppose I could have said to those who worry about what will happen, perhaps they ought to find parents in the other school districts and say, has your special education special education program deteriorated? Have things stayed the same? Have they improved? Perhaps the consumer might best speak. Obviously, if they had deteriorated to the point where there's a clamor for a change and a changing of the guard, that didn't happen in this gentleman's case in over 25 years. But we're talking about we're talking about this this man because he he's been the catalyst for it. But I think the concern is whether there there is now a philo an educational philosophy change among we got lots of new faces, not the board faces, but there are lots of new administrators in this district. That is not only it's. And I guess people, there are a lot of people who don't feel comfortable yet with those people. Would they have felt comfortable if we waited 12 months, 18 months to no, find somebody? No, I'm not. I'm not suggesting I th I think, you're suggesting. I raised the question because that's certainly part of the dilemma. Clark's gone. The, this the is not, it's not about this is well, not about Judy anymore. I'm asking whether the, the philosophy of the school district is one where experience counts more than the piece of paper. Because in a lot of ways, I don't think the piece of paper means a whole lot in some areas. I, I would I But would I say, think I, that's the concern that's out there. Well, I would say what you just said most likely represents the more balanced view. I don't think we put our, all our cards on one issue when we, can, when we can look at these matters with a balanced view. There's something to be said about training. There's something to be said about paper certification, and there's something to be said about experience. If, if we can make these selections, balancing all those things, also considering the conditions that we're engaging and what, what's the best arrangement among the alternatives available to us, that's the way we ought to make a decision. And I think the dilemma is that the parents don't know, aren't feeling enough confidence in those people that necessarily are working day to day with their kids yet, because apparently a lot of them haven't been here very long. This is just another change that they're going to have to get used to. And I guess until they're comfortable with it, the questions are going to be there. And you just have to accept, everybody's going to just have to accept that. It's not a change in philosophy of this district to now hire uncertified people over uh, higher experienced people over certified people now, is it? Okay. Good evening, Ellen Allen Hatfield. Um, I don't know if this is a question or a statement that I have, but I have been coming to school board meetings a lot of years, and I feel very privileged to have worked with Judy Nomner, and I have always appreciated the high qualities that she had and the broad experience that she had, not only as a teacher or principal for many years, and then to add on top of that, <coughs> Director of Pupil Services with special education certification. I think back to who served us in that capacity prior to Judy, and I believe that was Dr. Alan Elko, am I correct? Yes. Did he have that special aid certification? Mm -hmm. I believe so. He I did. Know. It came I from an IU. I believe yeah. so, yes. It came from okay. um, I just wondered if we were all struggling with something that maybe we have something new and it's wonderful and want to maintain that same level, but maybe we need to think back to even before Alan Elko and, and anybody else who served in Director of Pupil Services. Um, 
I'm not sure how I really feel about some of the changes that are being made. There are many changes being made, but maybe we all need to look at them in a positive <coughs> manner. I, I feel like I'm always the cheerleader around here trying to make everybody feel better about some of the things that are taking place. But I personally believe I've had experience with my own children in special ed services. I'm a real proponent of special ed. And I personally believe that a lot of what the parents need, the children need, are the delivery of the program. And we get that directly from our staff members. And I think we can all agree that we have a high quality level of staff members. Not to ignore what our supervisors add to that or the people above them, but the program is delivered by the staff members. It is designed by them as well as the supervisors. And I think we all can feel pretty confident that that is not going to change. And I think Mr. Shipman will prove as a, a valuable member of the North Penn School District. So let's all be positive. Thank you. Anybody else, please? Hi, my name is Kim McGuan. I'm an upper Gwinnett Township. Um, I just we want to catch your name. We're sorry. Kim McGuan. I just wanted to say that this is the first board meeting I've attended, and I've noted a, a strong degree of hostility towards Ms. Krieger when she um, questioned Shipman's qualifications and in requesting a resume, and that I was very disappointed and disheartened to see her being attacked uh, by the board members you know, for that. And I, I also had a question. Um, she mentioned an internal candidate, and if someone on the board could give me some information about to what degree that was pursued or... Uh, that's personal. Excuse me, I just, yes, I just called you a personnel Absolutely. matter. And you should not be discussing that's an individual's qualifications or, or names. Uh, the just that there was an internal that. person. Kosky Tomans and Township. I also have concerns over this whole issue involving special ed and Mr. Shipman. But to me, this is just one piece of a picture that's making me more and more concerned about uh, all our personnel um, uh, hirings and practices over the last couple years. I don't mean this at all derogatory towards Mrs. Miller. I from what I see as far as the hiring of teachers, they, they do seem to be a somewhat higher caliber than in the past, and I'm pleased to see uh, we're bringing in people with stronger credentials in that area. I believe where I see problems is in other administrators and perhaps the board itself. Over the last few months, we've lost many, many fine, highly qualified people. Uh, some of these, most of them have gone on to higher positions. At the same time, uh, I think if people are looking, it sometimes indicates at least a degree of unhappiness in their present position. And I wonder uh, why so many people are leaving our ship at once. I'm also concerned at what seems to be some confusion and contradictory things on the board's part. And I'll just give some brief examples over the past few years. Uh, a few years back, contracts were taken away uh, from Mr. Weir uh, and Mr. Wood, and I believe the then personnel director, because the board didn't feel they were needed or justified. Uh, a month or two ago, those contracts came back. Uh, approved by many of the same board members who didn't want them a year or two ago. Uh, we heard tonight that um, there was some confusion over our chart as far as our administrative organization, as far as who Mr. Shipman reports to, as far as his salary being listed in the chart at 85000 and he's brought in at ninety two. We have a five or $10,000 discrepancy in the financial position 
And I wonder if we know what we're doing and why these contradictions exist. And I think uh, those who questioned if we could have brought in uh, other candidates at a position advertised at 75,000 rather than 65 have a valid point. Now, yesterday on the radio, Mrs. Mengel said there would be no one hired uh, for the other half of the former Judy Clark job. <coughs> Tonight, I hear her say that we may need another supervisor. I can appreciate that need. But at the same time, if we now have to hire another body, perhaps we could have looked a little longer, maybe increased the salary for the position Mr. Shipman took, and maybe we could have gotten somebody with both certifications instead of just half of what we needed. Um, I'm not a person usually to think very highly of state requirements as far as certification. I find it ludicrous in Pennsylvania that somebody with a master's or a doctorate in many other fields can teach in colleges but can't teach kindergarten without a degree in education or state certification. So normally I would look at that a little nonchalantly. But in this case, we have a situation where our state funding of many hundreds of thousands of dollars could be in jeopardy, and that does concern me. Uh, another matter that concerned me in the same um, agenda last week at which Mr. Shipman was hired was the hiring of Amy Derrickson for the uh, Nutrition Standard Consultant. Is Amy Derrickson, as I believe somebody asked at that meeting last week, it was hard to hear in the back of the room, the daughter or daughter-in-law of Marie Derrickson? Would somebody answer that, please? And Marie is uh, your secretary, Mr. That's Wood, correct. for these for those in our uh, television audience, and you, of course, are in charge of food service. That's correct. Uh, I'm concerned that for this position at $22 an hour, we did not hire somebody who was a nutritionist, a dietitian, a home ec teacher, or even a chef. <coughs> but I would yield to Mrs. Clark, or excuse me, Mrs. Miller, to explain to you if she's at liberty uh, what the, the background and the credentials are of Mrs. Derrickson. I am not at liberty to re to reveal the, those qualifications at this time. I can tell you, however, that we would not have hired her if she were not qualified for the job. Well, I still remain concerned uh, about, you know, her being hired for this position, be particularly because her mother-in-law is Mr. Wood's secretary and she is reporting to Mr. Wood. And, over the years, I've gotten increasingly concerned about what I call our family and friends policy. And uh, it seems uh, rather rampant and has been for many years. And maybe it works for MCI, but it, uh, it really doesn't do a whole lot for me in terms of a school district. Thank you. She's directly accountable to Ms. Irvin. She does not work for me. She works for Ms. Irvin, a food service person. Not directly for you, but you are ultimately in charge of food service. Okay. It should also be noted that the, Mrs. Derrickson's um, salary is paid out of the food service account, and so there are no tax dollars uh, associated to her hiring. Is there not, Mr. Wood? Anybody else, please? Okay. Dr. Bose. Sure. I would draw your attention to the addendum, which uh, has a, as its first recommendation the approval or acceptance of tuition payments in an amount of $7,053.98 from the North Penn International Friendship Committee for each of the following exchange <coughs> students so as to conform with recent federal law known as Section 625 of the 1996 Illegal Immigration Reform and Immigrant Responsibility Act. Those two youngsters from Germany are, are listed there, and this action, uh, should you approve it, would modify the previous action 
with the boards with respect to the exchange students listed herein. So moved. Motion by Mosey, second by Krieger. Solicitor Bortle, you did review this motion this evening? Uh, I wrote it, yes. You wrote it, yes. thank you. That, that, says, that tells us plenty. Yeah, but did you review it? <laughs> yeah, did you review it? Or did you just write it? Did you read what you wrote? <laughs> <laughs> okay, any board questions? Just, I, I'd like to know what you meant, Mr. Solicitor, by shall modify past action. What, 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 what was the modification? Uh, as, as I understand it from, uh, from Mr. Weir, we discussed this, uh, I guess, at the end of uh, last week. Uh, these, um, uh, these two exchange students were originally going to come on a uh, rotary program. Uh, as, and, and I think that's correct, Ken, is it not? Yes, uh, that's correct. As such, they would not have had to have had their tuition paid to the district. And when you uh, uh, passed your prior motion, you did so without any regard to a tuition, which would have been proper had they come under that program. Unfortunately, they did not come under that program, okay. and so the law requires, the 1996 legislation requires, that their tuition be paid to the district. Mr. Weir has made arrangements uh, for uh, the uh, North Penn International Friendship Committee to pay that tuition, and, and therefore you should change your prior motion to, uh, to not say that they're coming tuition free, but rather that their tuition is being paid in accordance with the law. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other further questions? All in favor would say aye. 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 Those would say nay. Thank you. Next recommendation to seek your approval for the following community education part-time staff and salaries uh, for gymnastics program supervisor, $25 an hour, gymnastics program assistant supervisor, $16 an hour, aquatic program supervisor, $25 an hour, instructor, $20, instructors, $20 an hour, and support staff, aides, lifeguards, and coaches to be paid in the range of 6 to $20 per hour, depending on responsibilities and qualifications. A motion to approve? Move. I'll fix that. Motion to approve. Mr. Schilling, is there a second? Second. Second, Mr. Mosey. Okay, folks, we did miss A, but we'll come back to it. It still doesn't mean that we can't move with B. Uh, there's a motion and a second on the floor. Questions to the right? Left? Community ed is self-sufficient here. That's right. So we just have to approve these rates as all we do. Authorize us to pay. Thank you. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed would say nay. Thank you. Recommend the approval of the waiver of tuition status <coughs> for students whose names are in file in the Office of Student Services in accordance with Board Policy 5118. Any motion? So moved. Motion by Sher. Second. Second by Allen. Questions left? Right. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Thank you. Recommend approval of uh, for 14 life skills support and learning support students whose names are on file in the Department of Student Services to be enrolled in a special education work study program and be employed by the North Penn School District for the 1997-98 school year. Second. Second. Okay, motion by Allen, second by Krieger. Questions to the right? Left? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Thank you. Recommend early approval for early admission to kindergarten and first grade in accordance with board policy 5111 per student list on file in the office of the director of student services. So moved. Question by Mosey. Second. Second by Sher. Questions? I just would like to know, Dr. Bose, how many children at this time are we going to see uh, in early admission? Uh, uh, nine. 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 Further questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Recommend approval for the contract with Lakeside Alternative School for the purchase of 40 slots for the alternative, alternative education students in the amount of $554,500 for the 1997-98 school year. So moved. Motion by Krieger. Second. Second by Weiss. <coughs> Questions left? I have a question. Yes, sir. Just, just, a, just an information question. 40 slots, is that... Is that just an approximate number and we may fill 40, we may not fill 40? Or is 40 we know we're going to fill? That's my understanding, we fill 40. Mm -hmm. What if, if we need 42? No, sir. We can get two more? Back in I think it's 40. And there's a waiting list. I think what you do is you hope to there and that's why we get 40. We know we'll need at least 40. We'll have a waiting from list. From history. In some cases we purchase yeah, slots from those. 
all the districts. Yeah. They released them. Yeah. They come and go. Okay. I have a question on this. I'm more just confused now than I have raised the question. <laughs> this is just strictly the tuition for the program. This is not inclusive of any arrangements for the transportation with Lakeside. I know we've we've had some discussions on this. This is just strictly the educational program. And we'll see transportation, I guess, coming up soon, right, Art? We usually do it this time of year. That is correct. Okay. Any further questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. All in favor say nay. Recommend approval to submit plan con part F construction documents to the Pennsylvania Department of Education for a 600 plus student addition in alteration to North Penn High School. So, so moved. So moved. Everybody moved. Anybody want a second? Second to send it back. Attach Moses' name to it because he's on that committee. Who's the second? Bring right here Sharp. via FedEx, please. Questions on left? Right? <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Thank you. Recommend approval to employee Ralph W. Moyer and Harold G. E. Uh, is that pronounced Goggin? Gone. Uh, gone. Gone. To complete plan, card, plan con part J, final cost data for projects listed. Payment for this service shall be $1,500 or $1,500 per project, which includes an independent audit. So moved. Second by Maggie, second by Sher. Questions? Just. Art, if we take five times fifteen hundred seventy five hundred, it's going to be our total cost, correct? That is the total cost. Thank you. Any other questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Say nay. Thank you. Recommend approval to execute resolution number ninety seven that will allow the North Penn School District to purchase materials, supplies, and equipment from purchase contracts of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. So moved. Second. Okay, motion by Schilling, second by Mosey. <coughs> Solicitor on resolutions, are these roll call votes? Uh, not if it's uh, unanimous. Uh, you can uh, you can vote on it, and uh, if it's unanimous, uh, uh, you need not call the roll, only if okay. there's uh, uh, some no votes. Okay. Board questions? Just, are, are we going to be restricted to specific materials and equipment? They send us a list, or how does this work? They regularly send us a list, and I might say that their pricing has gotten. It was a time when our bids were better than their bids, but now, for an example, you authorize the purchase of a piece of John Deere equipment, and their price on the state contract is considerably less than what we would get if we were bid. So we watch that, and we shop both lists regularly. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Yeah, since this is new, is this how the Penny Association at all with the Penimation State Bidding uh, hardware that was approved last month? Any connection it would, whatsoever? It's the same. In other words, when we're buying computer uh, hardware, we're buying it off the state contract. Right, and, but we've never passed such a resolution before, so is this something that's necessary in order to execute that vote? <coughs> no. Or that acceptance it's of the hardware? No, it's okay. part of let me the let me let me answer that yeah, question. I'm, I'm the answer is it's no this. because the state law enabled you to make the purchase that you did the last time with respect to hardware. Okay, so this is only relating to certain things that aren't already affected by state law. Is that it, Solicitor Barter? Uh, the the state law actually says that you can do it. I'm going to get to the exact resolution if I can uh, just take a look Certainly. at where, where that is. Okay. Yeah, maybe that would have uh, I would have been able to understand that better. I'm just trying to understand what, it, what its is meaning is. Oh, do you have one? I don't have one. So it's in your, it's in the board agenda that the, the uh, audience has. Well. It's on the back page. I think I'm missing. Oh, here we go. Okay. Art, we've bought from the state contract. Before, Before, haven't we? Yeah, but this is the first I've ever seen of this resolution. I know we've used state bidding most of these Okay. Oh, uh, this just appears to be a, uh, uh, a general resolution uh, regarding the uh, uh, regarding the purchase. Uh, it, it doesn't really say any more than the uh, uh, than the act itself, other than it says we agree that we will be responsible for payment directly to the awarded vendor under each purchase contract. That, of course, is the case anyway. But this will be applying for anything that may be purchased in the we, upcoming we year or specific? We get lists after the state bids that gives us our prices for the state contract. Our okay. purchase orders go directly to the vendor. They do not go to the commonwealth. And we pay the vendor directly. Do we have to do this each year? 
them to renew a, to accept the new list or something? No, this this will suffice in the future. Okay, it's just something new at this time for All us. All in favor say aye. aye. Okay. Uh, aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. I had a question. Oh. Jeez, don't. I thought we were through the questions. <laughs> Move right ahead. No, just, just, just the word cooperative. I, I knew that um, at one time, I don't know if we still are, but we were in that uh, solid waste co cooperative agreement where if the county decided to go with one hauler, then the rest of us had to go with that hauler. Is this similar? This is nothing like that. Okay. You, can, you can pick and choose here. If you okay. want a Ford truck, you can have a Ford truck. If okay. you want a Chevrolet, you can have a Chevrolet. And if you want nothing, you can have nothing. Right. Okay. You don't have to do it. I see. Okay. Dr. Bose, yeah. recommend approval to submit to the Pennsylvania Department of Education, Division of School Facilities, uh, PDE 307-4B uh, uh, form, for the construction of additions and renovations to Knapp Elementary School. So moved. Second. second. Motion by Mr. Schilling, second by Mr. Weiss. <laughs> yes, we have a question. <laughs> yes, Mr. Sharice. Um, could you please refresh my memory, the estimated completion date of this project? A couple of calls. Some people thought it was going to be open in September. I said, I wish no, that's I, not right. I wish I could tell you that. You have to understand that the project is behind at this moment. Okay. Mm -hmm. We missed the summer of 1997, although there's a couple of weeks left. It's our intent to bid in September or October. We're still waiting uh, final approval from Borough Council. And we're assured that that's moving, you know, that's moving in, the, in the right direction. Um, I then will have to put together a schedule okay. and share that with you. It won't be this September. It won't Any be good? this September. It Any other questions? Be September of 97, and we'll pray it two weeks that it'll be September of 98. Well, will that have a full scope and sequence of the of the project? Do you think you'll be able to do that so that the principals as well as the, the, the board could have a pretty good idea of what areas will be yeah, inconvenienced meeting, at particular I've times? I've been meeting regularly with Mr. Feely and his I'm staff. Sure. They probably are discouraged now that they won't come back and see construction underway because we had promised that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I guess the word that I'm about to take out of my vocabulary forever is the word fast track. I mean, there's there's nothing that's fast tracked anymore. Mm -hmm. We learned that. Okay, thanks. We'll look All forward those in to favor that. say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Some of With respect to Jay, I remind you of the addenda. Uh, and uh, recommend to you the approval of Carl Debbie as the manager of financial affairs at the salary of $75,000 annum, effective September 2, 1997. So moved. Second. Second. Yeah. This is sheer. Uh, Any questions? Yes. Yes. Dr. Bose, uh, I know that the question was asked earlier, but I don't know if I fully understood your explanation. Um, we advertise a salary of sixty to seventy thousand dollars, and I understand that all the candidates that came forward knew that was the that was the payment or that was going to be the stipend. Um, I'm sure that some may have asked for more, and probably Deloitte and Touche disqualified them because they probably said this is the salary range and, and this is what we're paying. Uh, I just like to know why we're. And I have no problem with Ms. Getty. I was involved in the interviewing process, and I think she's going to be a tremendous asset for the school district. But why the change in the additional $5,000? I'm not sure I, I, I can say that uh, your uh, analysis of the way Deloitte and Touche handled this. No, no, I don't know. Um, I, I don't know either. I don't I, either. That's what I'm trying to I don't know <laughs> whether the initial contacts <coughs> covered that topic, so I'm not at liberty to give you an accurate answer. I understand answer. that. Uh, but I do know when I sat down to, to talk to this uh, individual, um, and she acknowledged the fact that there was a range in the advertisement to which she responded. She asked if we would reconsider it and shared the, with me the fact that she was actively pursuing other possibilities and thought that she had, could demonstrate to us that she had marketable skills and uh, that uh, she uh, uh, would, would uh, see the possibility of a long-term relationship with her. And she, she suggested a higher salary than that. Uh, we settled on that. I agreed to recommend it. 
Uh, I do know uh, it was, uh, and I remind everybody who uh, remembers the green sheet that uh, proposed the uh, change in organization that I recommended, and the word used was estimate, analysis and estimate of cost. And this is a case uh, like shipment uh, where we have gone over the estimate, but we're still within the savings range that we predicted. In, in this case, I believe this lady and her uh, considerable credentials in business and in public schools is worth it in this matter. I got a question. In conjunction with that, um, she is an extremely qualified lady. Uh, was any commitment made to her that uh, there's a possibility that the position, there could be a reorg and she could be elevated with additional salary in the near future? Or? I remembered our conversation and I said that was possible within two years, perhaps a year. Okay. Any other Thank questions? You. I just have a comment here. Uh, I will say that there was an ethical question regarding the change in the salary contrary to what was advertised. I spoke with that Dr. Bose on that. But in regards to Carol Deddy, I look forward to the day when this position of finance is elevated back to a cabinet level position. I look forward to the day when we can go back to having at least a director of financial affairs, if not a business manager, with uh, direct responsibilities to the superintendent of the board. I do believe Carol Deddy may expedite. She has the abilities and the skills to perhaps bring that a little further into um, closer in our future than perhaps what many people inside the district was anticipating or looking for at the time that they advertised for this position. I think you said earlier yourself, Dr. Bose, that you were looking for someone more like a, a mid-level entry position. I myself was not, and I am glad that we have found someone who does have the abilities and skills and talents to step right into this position, and Mr. Tracy will not have to spend his time speaking with her and introducing her to school finance policy issues. And um, for that, I'm willing to uh, certainly uh, make an alteration in, in what the original objectives and goals are. And I, I, I strongly support this and urge everyone to. Any other comments or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Recommend the approval of James Malley as supervisor of special education at a salary of 68000 per annum. Effective August 22, 1997. So moved. Second. Mr. Mosey, Mrs. Krieger, any questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. We have a host of uh, personnel items that I, I will move as one recommendation. I, I think we're agreeing on that. As one recommendation, and of course, if the board wishes to separate them, it certainly is the board's privilege. Uh, I, I move the uh, board appoint the four professional and 12 support staff as noted. Excuse me, Dr. Miller. Dr. Goes, I found a slight okay. error on one of the entries, and I wanted to correct it before the vote was taken. Good. If, er you. if everyone could look, please, at page one. Uh, where the personnel nominations are listed, the professional nominations. Number two, Terry Osga. There is a salary listed there of $36,000. It should say $36,200. Yes, a special ed. Thank you, Dr. Bose. Thank you, Dr. Mark. I will continue uh, recommending you accept the resignation of one professional staff and two support staff as noted. Uh, the uh, retirement of one support staff, uh, the uh, position uh, for, uh, change for one professional staff and one support staff also as noted, the uh, professional salary change for three professional staff and two support staff, and lastly, uh, the uh, contract changes for two professional staff, all of the above as listed on BA-5. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Mosey, second by Mr. Schilling. That's pages one, two, and three of the agenda. Right. Are there any questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Recommend approval of professional and support <laughs> staff. <laughs> 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 no. 
It keeps moving. <laughs> Substitute list for the 1997-98 school year as provided on BA-6. Some <laughs> Mr. Schilling and uh, Mrs. Shear. Are there any questions? Time's up. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, so moved. Abstain. Whoops. Abstain. One abstention. Mr. Clinton. I think that was the one. <laughs> Number two. Did you say number two? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's with support staff. Mm -hmm. You're correct, Tom. Oh, you mean wait a minute. Wait a minute. Where are we? I, I think I was following them. I'm okay. We're on item three, right? <laughs> We're on item they three. may not be, but <laughs> you're on item three. Oh, you get an answer. We don't. Go ahead. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Dr. Did, did you vote on two? Yes, we yes. voted on two. Okay. <laughs> Moving right along. Who's on first? Who's on first? Recommend approval of additions and deletions to the extra duty assignments for the 1997-98 school year as provided on item 108-97. One, Second. Mrs. Shear. Yes, Phil, let's have a question. I gotta get my hand up Are we quick. Up? Time's okay. up. Okay. <laughs> um, were, Julie, were there certain um, increases in extra duty compensation realized for the upcoming year? For some of the candidates, I noticed that there's a change in some of the salaries. I will refer you to um, Dr. Hassler, who can help you with that. I believe. I believe um, <laughs> it would depend. It would depend on the, the position that they're in, the experience they have, where they fall in on the scale, etc. A just length of time in a certain capacity sure. also yes. play into that. Yes, yes. And on what page is the? Um, Never mind, I found it. I just wanted to see the compensation. And finally, um, could you just update the board on when you anticipate um, naming the girls' soccer coach? Because it's not listed yet. I uh, can at this point. Inter Inter interviews are being scheduled, I know that. Yes. Interviews I, are I, being I scheduled. I think by the next school board. Okay. okay. And do you know. Uh, there are there are the, the we're back into the schedule of a committee meeting and a business meeting. It might be special action on the committee meeting. Any other questions? No, I just wanted to thank the board for your questions. You're quite welcome. Voting for the extra duty assignments for the 1997 1998 school year. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank Thank you. 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 Thank other business, recommend approval to extend the contract with National Management Associates not to exceed an additional 20 days per the terms and conditions set forth in the original contract approved on May 15, 1997. So moved. Second. Mr. Mosey. Second. Mr. Schilling, any questions? Comment. Yes. Clear the record here, just so everyone That's understands, because I have been questioned already by the media. Uh, this was originally put in motion prior to Mr. Tracy and Mr. Wood, uh, uh, Mr. Wood taking Mr. Tracy into an introductory meeting with uh, our newly hired uh, manager of finance, financial affairs. So uh, we are, it is being altered because of the credentials and qualifications and background experience that she brings and it is not necessarily 20 days as, as we have now allowed this to be, and we expect that uh, the background that she's bringing to the table will greatly affect the number of days and the amount of time that Mr. Tracy needs uh, to help us through a transition period. And I think that's important to note that it's a questions? benefit already gained to the taxpayers in the district. Very good. Very All good. those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Opposed? Wrong. <laughs> Recommend approval for real estate tax exemption on the parcel as noted, Unit 125, Lots 35 36, that was acquired by Hatfield Township as open space and as presented and on item 105 96. So moved. Second. Mr. Mosey, uh, no, Mr. Schilling. Schilling, I second. Oh, Mr. Schilling beat you? Okay. <laughs> beat yes, you have a question. Yes, I have a question for the solicitor on item B and C. To your knowledge, are either one of these parcels um, asking for this exemption um, on the list of appeals? Hmm? No. That's out the space. That we're doing? No. Okay. The answer was no. no. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Okay. Recommend approval for real estate <laughs> tax exemption on the parcel as noted. <laughs> which was acquired by Talmadge and Township and exonerate the Township from the appropriate portion 
of the 97-98 tax bill as presented on item 106-97. So moved. Mr. Allen. Second. Mr. Mosey. Any questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, so moved. Recommend approval to grant a deed of easement to the Hatfield Township Municipal Authority at A.M. Culp Elementary School in accordance with the enclosed plot plan and deed of easement as presented on item 111-97. So moved. Second. Mr. Schilling, Mr. Mosley, are there any questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, so moved. Mr. Treasurer's report. Treasurer's report. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. The Treasurer's report for July, balance of investment as of June 30th, 1997, $13,851,219.71. <laughs> Cash receipts for July 1997, $5,828,473.41. <laughs> Cash receipts year to date, the same as our receipts for July, since that is the beginning of our cash receipts in the new fiscal year. Cash disbursement, disbursements for July 1997, $3,995,878.59. Total available funds, $15,683,814.59. Our investments, short-term investment, $5,633,948.88. Long-term investments, $9 million. Interest-bearing checking account, $1,049,865.65. Total investments for July 1997, $15,683,000. $814.53. Fine. Do we have any uh, questions? No questions. What about uh, invoices? Yeah, okay. Sanction and approval of invoices. To be sanctioned. Disbursements for the month of July. Prepaid list general fund for fiscal year 96-97, $200,532.72. For fiscal year 97-98, $1,158,446.82. Bond fund expenditures to be sanctioned, $3,625. Payroll, $2,600,646.10. Visa, $143.16. Voided checks. $23,187.62. Total, $3,940,206.18 to be sanctioned. To be approved, disbursements for the month of August. Check register for fiscal year 96 $217,210.37. $217 for fiscal year 97-98. $272,495.66. I have a motion for approval. So moved. Mrs. Shear, Mr. Schilling, any questions? I just have a question on the bond fund um, expenditure card, <coughs> uh -huh. briefly. Ongoing bond expenditures for Pendale. Okay. And that could be, I need to qualify that, could be some uh, permitting or initial cost for the high school. Okay. Any other questions? <clears throat> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, so moved. Food service report? Mr. Wood? Mr. No Wood. report. Typically in August, we have no income, so we do not do a food service report. Thank you. Federal programs, Mr. Bose? No report. Solicitor's report. Uh, yes, Mr. Vice uh, President, yes. I, I just have a, uh, a couple of matters to mention, and I'll try not to hold you up. Uh, the, uh, the first is the question that I received with respect to the, uh, the state purchase from uh, Mrs. Scherr. Uh, that, that, really, uh, that form is really uh, form over substance, and if you've made a state purchase uh, in the past, which we certainly have, that form has been signed in its, uh, in its resolution form, uh, number one. Number two, uh, Mrs. Krieger asked me a question about the, uh, uh, the parcel numbers in question. 
Uh, we would never consider appealing parcels such as that because these parcels are owned by Tomenson and Hatfield. They're owned by municipalities and are therefore tax exempt, and that's what you're ratifying. So that has nothing to do with the with the appeals that we filed with respect to assessments on privately owned property. Okay, these are properties that are owned by municipalities. Uh, and the last thing that I have for the board's consideration is that I would ask that you approve, uh, thereby ratifying the filing of 71 assessment appeals. Uh, by my office on behalf of the district, which were filed with the Montgomery County Board of Assessment Appeals uh, on or about August 4, 1997, and each of the members of the board has a list of, uh, of those 71 appeals uh, properly filed. So moved. Moved. stated. So moved. Mr. Schilling, Mr. Shear, any questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, so moved. And I get a call. Are there any other questions for the solicitor? Are there any other business we brought before the board? Motion Hearing none. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Adjourn. Second. 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 Second.